Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. That wait wasn't too long, I hope, but it will be very well worth it as we are going to get right underway with the CS2 action. We have the St. Clair College Academy team versus the University of Windsor Esports team, and we are getting the action started with Aztec as we already see two pickoffs from Petro. Andy's got one. JBH finds wow. his, and that's going to be a very clean wipe. University of Windsor at least got the plants, but Saints are able to take this flawless. Honestly, got some greedy players already getting two kills, leaving uh, the rest of their team without any so far. Yeah, an amazing start from St. Clair College. It's looking to be very good, but that's just the pistol round as we get it closer to the, you know, more official rounds once they get some bigger guns in these hands. Oh, yeah. We'll really start to see how these matches are going to shape out, but props to St. Clair College from starting off very strong. It's very strong indeed. It's first to 13. If you're not familiar with the format, terrorists have to get onto the site, plant the bomb, and let the bomb detonate, or both teams can kill each other completely. On CTs, if the bomb is planted, have to defuse the bomb in order to win. So, ladies and gentlemen, now that you know what the stakes are, you know how the rules work, it's all about enjoying the action from here as we already get one pick off Miggy finding Sly Fakey on the up and up trying to make their way to B side but it's not going to go through as we're getting some wall bangs already Andy taking down one but they are able to get the trade first kill of the game going for Uni Windsor and they're going to be trying to push their way through the middle here but they're not going to get it going Andy's going to go down Mac 10's already spraying through so perfect for engagements just like this is going to be utilized perfectly the smoke is going to go down they'll just make this hold a little bit scarier for the Saints very very scary smokes are going out all the ordinance is deployed right now. Sneaking through, trying to find a pick here. Does he uh, know there's a guy right around the corner? He's waiting for his teammate to push up. There's a little bit of a face-off going off right now. Looks like Dunk is going oh, to start he's the plant. It. There it is. Bomb has been planted. Now they just have to try and defend it here. Watch this peak. He, he, he takes these. I feel it. You can <laughs> tell by looking at a player the way, they, the way their camera looks. You know they're going to get the sickest flick of all time. Miggy sees the nade gang toss. Turns around. But the, around the corner, he's going to get shot from behind. But, oh, Miggy is not able to find the mark. University of Windsor taking a round back. Tying this up 1-1 to take this series to already a close game. Yeah, already a close game. That first round looked very sided for St. Clair College. But now, as you can tell, once they got those rifles, things looked very, very different. Now things are looking to be dead even. St. Clair College now has to respond in t turn. Yep, PR. the economy is not looking that favorable no. for the Saints. <laughs> that was their round to win. Um, Economy-wise, they had all the money off of the previous round, and the University of Windsor had to deal with the scrap guns, the leftovers, the things that are cheap you can find in the bargain bin. But they still managed to find a win in that round. So now the Saints are left without any money, and uh, not a lot of confidence going through this next round. But it's far from over. It's never over until the bomb detonates, as I like to say. So they still don't have a lot of money, but they're going to have to make this round work. Hey, we saw what they did with pistols and pistol rounds, so maybe this is a little bit more comfortable for them. Maybe they can find Perhaps. a pick or two, upgrade their gun. Maybe they'll have a chance here, but it's still going to be an uphill battle. An uphill battle, literally, as he climbs up the hill to make his way over to a site. Going to drop the bomb. They don't want to lose it. I, whenever I see that, I assume that whoever's carrying it wants to play aggressively, and they don't want to drop the bomb behind any lines. An off shot. Well, that was not. That sounded like an off shot, but it was a deagle, and the way he fired it so confidently to me, it seemed like one. But he's going to miss his mark ultimately. Everybody on the side of the Saints are going to be holding Ooh. deagles, and Andy finds Drew with his one tap deagle headshot. You always love seeing it. Now. It's a matter of patience here. Boom! Oh, right. What a marksman. He had no idea. And to be fair, there's no real way out of that situation. He was surrounded on both ends, walking through smoke. There's not anything really you can do, but hope nobody's in there. Rifle versus Deagle. Who's going to take it out? <laughs> you don't like seeing that <laughs> muzzle flash there. It's always a scary sight. But they're trying to make their push over to B side. Gonna go for the peak. Finds the body shot. No trade is gonna come out that way. Molly's Molly. forcing it back. In fact, actually forcing it from retreating. It looks to be the case that they want to start their offense now. Ash is gonna find one. JBH is gonna go down as well, thanks to Dunk. Molly's are gonna barricade off his exit, and they're forced to stay here. Deagle is all he has to defend himself, but the Saints are rotating over. Rai is gonna go down alongside Petro, and we only have one Saint left. Miggy holding the Deagle in hand. Smoke is gonna make this a near impossible retake. It's down to the wire here. Time is ticking. The odds are stacked against him, but will he make this an expensive round for them, or will he just try and save the rifle he managed to find? That's looking <laughs> to be the play for him. He's going to rotate back over to spawn. 
play for exits maybe, but mostly he's just trying to exit with this gun himself. <laughs> Wise to me. Uh, the Saints, honestly, they got a decent amount out of this round. They got two kills. That's two guns lost for University of Windsor. Um, and like you see, Mickey was able to find a gun on the floor himself. So University of Windsor is going to take this round, but Saints are going to be able to do some economic healing uh, after their loss of the second round. Yeah, they're playing very well reactively here, just <laughs> making sure their economy is nice and flush going forward. Trying to play for picks. Played the disadvantage relatively well. You know, it wasn't a complete stomp on the side of University of Windsor, but they're looking to be in a great spot, winning two rounds in a row. Looks like we see uh, an op being bought as well. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so things are not going to be very easy for the Saints. Yeah, not at all. And to be fair, it is a T-sided player holding the op. It's not usually conventional. You pick it up that early. It is a little bit more risky, but Skyflake, I think he's going to be able to find one, two. Rai sees him gun. Miggy's going to get the return with that rifle he found in the previous round is going to be paying dividends, but he's going to go down ultimately in Andy as well before he's able to make how much of an impact. And just like that, basically every Saint is wiped off just Dunk remaining and from coming up from behind is one of the oh sorry no that's the, that's the same team right there I saw the blue name and I thought it was him but where is our saint here where is, where he? is he I think he's Petro over on B. yeah yeah he's over on B side he's just again holding onto this gun tight does not want to drop it he's holding onto it like it's a like it's a plushie you know it's, it's his... the only thing he has left all his <laughs> teammates are dead so. exactly it's his comfort gun keeping him safe and sound. Here's the plant. It looks like he might be going to try and find a pick or something. Maybe for wait sure. For people on the hunt. Maybe find a better Ooh, gun. Yeah. There's a little bit of a better <laughs> gun there. A lot better. But look at that knife. I love it. Oh, DC. Hopefully that's a false alarm on the side of face it there. But just going to be holding it down best as he can. Petro holding that angle. If he held it there a little bit long, you might have been able to find Dunk rolling through, but can he find him? He sees him, but he finds the mark. Perfect flick, perfect shot. Gets exactly what he needs now. But the rest of them are coming. You know he's here. Just be careful. He has so many angles of attack, but no, he's able to light him up. But he's ultimately going to go down there. Another round for University of Windsor. Timeout coming out. I believe, you know, maybe one to of them disconnected. The yeah. <laughs> Potentially. So both teams are going to have at least some time to think, some time to consider their next course of action. Going to the next rounds, the Saints are going to be buying some guns. They don't want to take this next round lightly. They don't want to take it lying down. But, it's again, they've proven, you know, outside of University of Windsor, it's pretty difficult to beat them out even when they are armed to the teeth. Definitely. Yeah, that pistol round maybe seemed like a little bit of a, of a fluke so far, <laughs> just with how well University of Windsor is playing right now. But it looks like this is going to be the round that St. Clair has something to prove here. Ooh, misses the op shot. That was a very close hit there. Can throw up the molly, try and put some pressure on him. Keep him boxed in. Right now the rest of the team is pushing up as well. He's playing up high here. Find some heads. Smoke is going to go down. Not going to let his teammate push up with him. Right now, University of Windsor just playing it slow, playing reactive right now. The Saints are playing very defensive as well, just using all their ordnance to slow down the attack. And ooh, that's going to be a pick from University of Windsor there on Petro there. Now, JBH, they know where the stakes are. They smell the gunfire. Rye is going to take out Sky Fakey, and Rye is going to go down in return to Dunk. Mickey finds a kill through that exchange, but the push isn't over yet. Andy finds two, a perfect lineup. Switching to his pistol because he's already out of ammo. He's going to have to reload, uh, but the off shot's going to find JBH on the sidelines there. It's just one terrorist left. But if, oh, that could be, this could be bad for both of them here. But it's going to be bad for University of Windsor instead. He's going to find the kill, and he's going to find the op as well. Who's going to be holding on the next round is going to be seen as we get into this. But Saints winning the first round in a while. That was pretty content. That was the round you had to win as 100%. well. An amazing upgrade. It's saving the op, playing very, very well. They are in an amazing spot to maybe take this into the lead here. But University of Windsor still has enough to buy most, <laughs> most guns for most of the team. And it's looking pretty all right for them if they manage to win this round. If we're looking at pure economics, whoever loses this round is going to lose the next because both teams have to invest pretty heavily here to be armed um, appropriately. Um, but if you lose this one, you're going to lose all of those investments. So both teams have to be playing a little bit carefully here. Walking through the fire and the flames here, trying to push up, take the corners. 
for ICS. Holding the corner as well here. Flames are dying down. Flash is going to go out. Fronts one and gets out. Wow, what movement there. And great flash. Great teamwork all around from Petro and Rai. Right now, it looks like a split push is coming out from Universal Windsor. Just trying to play for picks. Trying to find what site has the op, I'm sure. Wow, there's a clean pick coming out there from Drew and ACS. Meanwhile, Meg gets a pick as well. Dunk going to go down to there. Is that Sour Man there? <laughs> Sour Man, yeah. Get the pick as well. On the point, trying to hold it secure for his teammate to make it through, but Petro is going to find a very clean shot to put him down. Now it's just Drew with the bomb. Rather, it's going to be Sly Flaky with the bomb. He's going to be trying to decide which site it's going to go to. It's going to be a 2v2 for both teams. It really can go any way, but with 35 seconds remaining, the Saints are looking favorable. They spot the bomb carrier. Not going to be able to tag any damage onto him, but he's going to make a beeline for the B site to start planting it down. It's going to be a rotation game and retake for the Saints now. Rotation right now, like you said. Smokes are going to go out. They're playing a little bit more defensively, playing very far back. Just playing for the Saints to push up here. Saints are gonna throw out a grenade, try and clear out the site, but they're so far back, it's not gonna <laughs> affect them there. Actually hit his teammate oh, yeah. there. <laughs> a little bit of aggressive play there, but ooh, Drew gonna find one, and ooh. wow, synchronicity is the word I would describe that from University of Windsor, getting two kills within a few seconds of each other. That round's gonna go over to them. Well played, very well played. I, I do wanna say, I know that Aztec is one of the weaker maps. Actually, I don't think this one is called Aztec. Or did they call is this- it Ancient? Ancient, yes. yeah. I always call any jungle theme map Aztec, but Ancient <laughs> is one of the weaker maps for the Saints. Um, at least, you know, in my talking with Coach Accusing Penguin, or yep. Coach for today, Accusing <laughs> Penguin. It's one that they usually struggle with, but University of Windsor doing the actual opposite, playing out of their minds here, the way they hold their angles so confidently, and they always find their marks. It's very well played so far. So the mollies are coming out in droves here, blocking off all angles. Smokes are also going to come out. Don't going to find one on Petro, and another going to be happening there on the CT side, and Reich's going to find one. But Hodge can get one right there. Ooh, oh. A little bit of a pistol fight happened here. He <laughs> manages to get out, but Anish is going to take him out. I think he got a little over eager there. He should have probably retreated, taken the information he got from that. But when you're when your back's against the wall and you don't have a lot of money and you're playing cheap, you know, you, you just try to go for any kill you can get. And you, you really just turn into a honey badger and he just starts slashing and swinging, not caring with what happens to you. Now, speaking of which, he's going bravely onto the site knowing that he doesn't really have anything to lose. Um, he's even not, not even his own deagle. He's holding Mickey's deagle here. So the ultimate cheapskate, he is going to go down, not going to be able to find any pick Ops, but it's just next round for the Saints. They have a lot of money. Well, I don't want to say a lot. They have money to work with this yep. round, and they're going to work with it to the best of their abilities, but on the side of the University of Windsor, things are looking very good money-wise and gun-wise. You know, they could afford to lose a round or two even without really sacrificing any economy. Yeah, University of Windsor playing very, very well on Ancient, but maybe it's just the attack side. Once the sides flip, we'll see how they deal with that, but nonetheless, they are doing well in this moment, and St. Clair needs to find some footing here. If they start losing this round, it's going to be a little bit of a huge loss to spirit. And look at all this ordnance coming out from both teams, colliding midair, getting a lot from both sides. It's just a war zone here. Yeah, the smoke is up. Uh, it wouldn't be a war zone without your very cinematic clouds of smoke to really just tie all the set just together. But wow. Drew, with, I feel like he was playing Rainbow Six for a second there with that angle he was holding, but Andy not able to track the intruder who just peered his way onto B site. He's going to go down for it. Miggy holding off the flank, making sure nobody makes any rotations that they're not well prepared for. But getting shot from behind, Rai is eventually going to go down, but Miggy is going to kill the assassin. Assailant. I believe take his gun. Yep, he's holding on to that AK now. Bomb's going to go down on B site. It's just going to be two Saints left. Petro, I believe, and is that Miggy? I, yep. I believe so. Miggy. The profile pictures are slowly getting registered in my brain, but it's just going to be the two of them trying to make it over to B site. Again, probably not going to be going for the, the defuse necessarily, but they they at least want to see if they can get any pickoffs, do any damage they can to the economy. 
but uh, with how the how University of Windsor is playing right now, they're not going to take any undue risks. They're just going to try and play for exits as soon as they run out here. I think one of them's going to get clipped here. Oh, yeah, here. there they are. They're all pushing in through this little tunnel, but they're not going to fully commit and just throw some grenades down there, pepper them down. But, wow, what a round. University of Windsor are just starting to run away with it here. Looks like the Saints are in a little bit of a disarray after losing so many rounds. I think they just need to get their mental back in check because they were playing very, very well earlier. I, I like the choice that University of Windsor made there to not push them. Whether it was intentional or not, the the recognition that the Saints are the ones who are kind of desperate to get those kills because they save two guns, sure, but the rest of the team has no money to work with, right? What's the point in taking those guns from them if they're not really going to be able to play with them very well anyways? The Saints are actually going to go for a bit of a cheap round. They're going to buy some M4s and I'm assuming at least some armor, some smokes as well. So those guns, I suppose, acting as a bit of a buffer space, make that play a little bit easier for them on the wallet, but it wouldn't have broken the bank and it wasn't worth the risk ultimately. But speaking of which, they are going to already lose Petro wow. and Miggy, the two survivors from the previous round. They're finally going to get their due, but B-side push is going to be going for the option, but he tries to get the flanks. He's going to get picked off before he can find anybody's back. It's going to be down to Rai to try to make any kind of interference with this B-side push with his teammate. Got these flash, JBH is going to go down, and Rai will Holy as smokes. well. Holy smokes, indeed. <laughs> Doing such a good job at making that play possible for them. Yeah, University of Windsor making a statement here, and they're just <laughs> starting to run away with it. Just playing amazingly. It's just with Dunk and Drew, they are just playing so aggressively, and Anash as well. They're just playing so aggressively, and I feel like the Saints just don't know how to deal with it when they're down at the disadvantage with these weapons, and they're also investing in an op, I believe, there. <laughs> just a very confident play. Already gonna take some damage there, and Ish just shooting his teammate for no reason. Why not? They feel confident. They feel like they don't need shot. that HP. <laughs> yeah, it's a handicap. Uh, and I feel like what's going on here is either this is the most attacker-sided map of all time, or University of Windsor's just got the Saints figured out. It's going to be on... Oh, but Andy is actually going to find one with that op. This could mark the turnaround, potentially, if you're really optimistic, or it could just be a flash in the pan. It's definitely not going to hurt University of Windsor. That pickoff, he's got $9,000 to work with. He's going to get some more at the end of this one, regardless of how this turns out for them. So it's not going to matter too much for either of them either way. But they're going to pick off right now. It's one for one, four to four on this next round. Yeah, you never want to underestimate you, Windsor, though, as they have just managed to turn it in their favor every single time. Up against the op, up against anything, they've managed to conquer it. But the Saints, they got a pick. Now they still have to play for time. They are on the defense here. As long as the bomb doesn't go down, they are in a decent spot. Just waiting, playing the long game is the play here. 20 on seconds. Defense. 40 seconds to work with here. They're making the slow push towards A site. They're coming from kind of the back. The safe spot them out. Rotations are already coming up from them. Molly's are going to go down to make this hold a little bit harder. Or smokes, rather. Going to go up. Obscure them up. Miggy finding two. Potentially a third. Not, but it's going to be half of his HP down. JBH is going to get a wall bang. Miggy's going to go down thanks to that push. But just wow. like that, Andy's going to find the op shot lined up. Saints taking their first round in a long while. It's going to be going their way now only up from here surely they're still reeling uh in the e economic department they're doing a lot better overall but now university of windsor is going to be spending some of those dollars I, I did doubt that op but like you said optimism is the way to make things i didn't work say here <laughs> well you did say optimism but I'm put, they put I the op and optimism i don't want you to associate me with a pun that <laughs> egregious <laughs> But anyways, we're right starting out into the next round here. Smokes are coming out, grenades are coming out, flashes are coming out, everything's coming out here. We're seeing a nice little jump up there, a little bit of a lift up by a teammate getting on top of the Ooh. box here. The Saints are playing really well with the nades. It's unfortunate that, uh, I mean, they do have an opper watching those sites, but that extra softening damage just makes it so much better for their riflers. So much easier, so much more confident you can go in knowing that you only have to, you don't even have to get a headshot on those guys coming around. Gonna go for an exchange here, Dunk gets the boost, and that's gonna be able to help them find the kill, not able to get the shot, and or pick off. Drew's going to find JBH with the op. Miggy 
Key is going to be holding A side alone. Potential flank coming out from the side of the Saints around B side. Rai could be finding Sly Fakey, but he seems to be uh, aware of the fact that he could be getting stalked here. Now, it's just the Opera holding down the B angle long, but it's it's looking i think they're hesitating a little bit the saints they they know roughly where the university of Windsor wants to go but they can't commit too hard too hard for anything without risking a lot yeah, it's, it's a difficult position they're in and wow that was a very well placed grenade as well and yeah they're in a little bit of a rough spot so they have to play very very carefully on defense they're just playing reactively right now but wow great pick by miggy there and metro also on the support there Smokes are coming down, pushing in, and oh, wow. beautiful that shot. Sour Man gets the pick. Maybe they're gonna start rushing in. They know they have the numbers advantage now. Off's gonna go down, doesn't find the pick, but Rai's gonna find it anyway. Oh. Fully finds two, fully finds three. Through the box, he's very, very low. Whips out the pistol, oh. he gets it as well. Will he get another? No, he won't get shut down. But the opera's still on the line. He's watching Five seconds. the plant. Four, three, two. He had the time. One second remaining, he finds the plant. It's now just down to Andy to find the kill and to find the defuse. He can do it. This is not impossible. This is far from impossible. It's just going to come down to the skill and confidence of both of these players. You couldn't ask for a more perfect circumstance to prove yourself as a player for both of these teams. Either way, it's a difficult circumstance, but I look forward to seeing how they play this round. He's getting too confident. He made the wrong read. Thought he went on the inside there, but he was holding the other side of that wall such uh, uh you know there's it's a, it's, it's a guess you know yeah. <laughs> you, you can't know for sure but it is such a disappointment if you are on the side of andy you know uh, it must it must have been a lot of pressure so I definitely feel for him there yeah unfortunately we don't have uh the hammerhead uh 360 view vision there you can only look in <laughs> exactly. one direction only point your gun in one direction so you always gotta Make your guess, and you guessed wrong. But nonetheless, an amazing round from both teams, but the just had a little bit of an outplay at the end. Nonetheless, okay, already back in the swing of things here. Playing very aggressive, finds one pick. Will he find another? Yes, he oh. does, almost finds three, but this teammate cleans up. Miggy getting a double kill as well. Only one left on the side of University of Windsor. <laughs> and they know where he is, too. He's behind the doors here, hiding behind the box, playing way far back. And they have, they don't, he doesn't have bomb as well. Exactly. So he's in an awful spot. Very awful. I'm looking now at how this round kind of fares. If anything, this is a bit of an equalizer. At the end of this round, the Saints are going to, assuming everybody on the side of the Saints stays alive, which they're not, Andy is going to go down, and that's going to be really bad for him If uh, for the point I was trying to make, which was the Saints are going to be equalizing things a little bit economically. They should be in a relatively similar circumstance, which, yeah, they are. Well, actually, no, that was the last round for the half. Yeah. Yeah, so the economics aren't even going to matter at all. Uh, but you can see the side of the Saints. They're looking focused, looking determined. You see Coach accusing Penguin there. Again, Coach of today. Just, uh, you know, playing a supporting role today for the team. But as we head into this next half, a lot more to be said for both teams. Exactly. See, we do. We haven't seen uh, University of Windsor on the defense, so maybe this is just a T-sided map. Maybe this is just a little bit more of an aggressive attacking map. We'll have to see what St. Clair has in store, and if they can show us an amazing pistol round to start things off once again, that would be an amazing start for them. Indubitably. The dual Berettas is already promising to make this at least interesting of a pistol round to watch. Ooh. Looking forward to see how they plan on using. But the smoke lineup getting ready. Looks like they all are on B. All hands on deck. Got one watching mid, one watching A on the side of University of Windsor. But nonetheless, most of the action is going to be going down here. One spotted Miggy tries to go for the pickup. Finds two Dunk, finds another one. Sire Man taking the remainder. But Andy's going to take him down. Dunk is going to take him as a response. But Petro is going to find his mark but it's not going to be enough they are going to go down after that round and university of windsor are going to be taking this around this time around it happened the same way on the side of uh the saints maybe just defensively it's pistol and then once you get those rifles perhaps it's a little perhaps. bit more attacker sided you have to have some optimism when you're going into these engagements like we talked about earlier once again university of windsor in the driver's seat for now from Claire not going to be in a great spot
not going to be in a great spot, but that's the best part about being in the driver's position. You can move, you know, you can maneuver, you can put yourself in a good position for success. And whether or not they're going to be able to accomplish that's going to rest heavily on this round. If the Saints are able to pull this one around, things are going to be looking very good for them. Otherwise, they're going to be looking down the gun barrel of misery for the next few rounds as the University of Windsor will have the economic as well as uh, basically yeah. momentum advantage all the way through. Early pick coming out, that's what you expect, but they're playing very aggressively, just boxing all the Saints in here to this B push choke. And the Saints need to find something here. Smoke's going to go down. They're kind of forced to push out through here, but the FAMAS is waiting for them in the corner. It's going to be a tough turn, but maybe if they all shoot together, it'll be able to take them down. A few sprays out, doesn't get the kill. And there it is, Miggy finds the kill, and now the rest of University of Windsor has to flood it and try and get the defuse down. you going to find one. He's going in, you're going to play very aggressively, spray one down, sprays two down, there's only one left, and that is going to be it. The defuse is started, and that's going to be another round going over to University of Windsor. Very, very, very well executed by the side of U Windsor. The Saints, uh, I feel like their attack had an idea, but the execution there was a little bit shaky. They didn't go for it. I feel like especially when you're on the back foot, playing from the back foot, uh, you have to really just start going for things. Um, they hesitated a little bit. That allowed University of Windsor to pick up wind of what they were trying to go for, adapt, and execute their plan near flawlessly. It's 10-4. to 4. University of Windsor three away from taking this first game. The St. Clair College Academy Counter-Strike team, they're going to have to do some work to bring this back. Yeah, they have some work cut out for them here. But I believe if they can do it. Anyone can. Here we are. <laughs> it's going to be very, nice. very hard. <laughs> but uh, there we are. Spraying it down. Smokes and ordinance everywhere. Trying to flash Ooh. it out. They flash out the op. That's going to be advantageous for them. Continue the push. Bring out another flash. It's going to be a flash in response as well. The FAMAS in the corner. Gets concussed, but he gets one. He gets his trade. Now it's 4 4 now, an opportunity, like, that's an opening. Uh, the Saints really can take this. B-side is basically open. They could just make the B-line push through mid. They have the grenades to do so, but they are dragging their feet a little bit. I respect that they might be a little anxious, but if you take too long, then something like that happens. You lose one of your teammates when, realistically, you didn't have to. Um, they do, maybe they're not aware of the fact that the only member left on the side of University of Windsor is an opper, so they are still going to be playing relatively slow around the map. But if they do recognize the fact early in this round, well, they don't have to because they catch him from behind, take him down. Saints are going to be able to take this 10 to 5 now. You know, five more rounds to tie this up. I think they can pull it off. Yeah, it's not an absolutely unwinnable scenario right now, but it is a tough scenario to be in. But when you win a round like that, you grab an op, everybody is fully armed to the teeth. You can win this next round, put University of Windsor in a really bad economic position. Then you could really see where a comeback is possible. Nonetheless, it looks like they're going to push right over to A through mid. Trying to take some ground here. Flashes are coming out, smokes are coming out, mollies are coming out. The whole kitchen sink is being thrown at University of Windsor here, and they're going to throw it right back. Like some off angles here, they're pushing through. Aggressive. Now things are starting to slow down, but just as I say that, Sly Pokey gonna find one of the gate. And now they're kind of refocusing and refocusing right with the bullets into Rice. He has, he's going to go down, unfortunately. But like I was saying, the Saints are taking this very slowly. I feel like the, the way University of Windsor took their T rounds, it was slow, but it felt the slowness was calculated. They were going slowly because they were considering how to best execute their plan or what all the different fail-safes are there, right? But when I feel like the Saints are playing slowly, I feel like it's out of fear, which isn't what you want. And just like that, Petro is going to eventually go down. JBH is going to find Drew, however, but the return kill coming out from Dunk, Andy holding the op, you definitely don't want to lose this. If I was on his, sh if I was in his shoes, probably just fall back, hold an angle, and save the gun. But he's confident, and he's going to pay for that confidence dearly. He's going to go down on the site, give up the op, and that's a lot of money yeah, out of the pocket. Pride cometh before the fall when you have an op, and there's three angles you got to watch. It's, uh, it's not the position you want to be in, but the flash really screwed him up there at the end. 
But University Winds are just playing very consistently here, playing very reactively. When they have the advantage, they press it, and when they're in the disadvantage state, they really slow down and analyze their mistakes. For sure. So, uh, they're playing very confidently, very consistently. And the Saints just need to find some footing here, need to find some rhythm. They're just unable to do so. It's, it's very... It's like watching a symphony watching this game come out from University of Windsor. It's it's just so well executed. But JBH, Rai, they're going to find two in this hallway. The lost Andy in the process. But this is a lot better for... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm completely wrong in my analysis of this game. But I'm noticing a trend here. When the Saints play fast... They play confidently. They play well. They already have the bomb down. They didn't dilly-dally. They didn't drag their feet. They're on the point. They got the bomb down. They got two. Now they just have to wait. They have a molly to potentially hold off one of the paths that they know that University might want to take. But they are actually taking three different approach angles here. One's on the bottom flank. The other two on the top. And he finds the up kill on Miggy. Flash is going to go out. But he's going to go down. Rai's not going to be able to find the pick. But Petro behind Dunk as he tried to flank from the other side. It's going to be a 2v1. Op shot's going to miss. Smoke is going to go down on the point, but <laughs> hey, he went for it. I respect it. Petro's going to find him, however, and put a stop to that defuse. Um, the money is looking a little bit lopsided. It's pretty top-heavy dollar-wise. we got to get some redistribution going on the side for both teams. Uh, two rich members on both teams. The rest of them are pretty poor. How they're going to go about balancing their rounds this way is up to them. It seems like there's going to be a couple of buys going through. If I'm my, my quick math in my head is correct, I think a couple buys coming out from the Saints for their teammates. The rest on the side of University of Windsor. Just buying maybe armor, some nades, and then just holding on to the rest. One thing I do want to point out is one member on the side of University of Windsor has like two kills while the rest have double digits. <laughs> just a little bit of an interesting thing there. More but, support. Hey, it's still working out. Oh, oh I wow. they did not think that was missable. But I, I stand corrected. Sour Man is going to go down. He's gonna, it's just a lot of kills going on here. And an op is getting picked Upgrade. up at the end of it, you know? A lot of shots were let loose, and by the end of it, an op is picked up off of the ground. If he only knew. If only he was cheating. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> only that's basically what you're saying. <laughs> like, if only he had wall hacks. Sometimes you take the one in a million chance, you get it. But Reveal your position yeah. <laughs> and lose, but I respect it nonetheless. I do that, just to be clear. Me if I was too. playing, like, I would do it, but more stakes the than that. The dopamine rush you get from, <laughs> from being a near cheater. It's like doing it unblockable in Tekken. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's unruly behavior, but sometimes it just works out for your favorite. Of unblockable. <laughs> Those bullets aren't blockable as Not Rise CS and JB Edge get the final kill of the round. Get that op right back in the right hands. And the Saints take another round. Gaming for sure is going underway here. It's just, like I said, it's like a symphony. It's, it's so well played from both teams, and I am very happy to have University of Windsor here, even though they are thoroughly ravaging our Saints team. It is at least entertaining on this ancient side. Really like enjoy I'm really enjoying what we're seeing so far. But now looking at the guns here, everybody's strapped to the teeth. They're going to war. They're all prepared. Molly's going out. They know exactly where they want to go. The Saints are gonna go up through B, trying to make the rotation over to A side, but they're not gonna do it for free. Mickey is gonna go down in the process. It's a dangerous route, and I believe he let yeah. lose a shot right in his teammate's head. Uh, <laughs> I hope I saw that wrong, but he's still alive wow. nonetheless. JBH is going to make that not the case anymore, however. Very good headshot coming out. Now, Ansh is going to be pushed. I love moments like this where you get quiet, and then boom, he's going to get the kill. It's going to go down. Perfect headshot coming out from Rai. If they are going to be able to make the rotation over to A-Site successfully, Bomb is going to go down. He's got a teammate there to hold his back. Boom. Bomb has been planted, and now it's going to be on University of Windsor to take the initiative to bring this round to a close. Yeah, the ball's in their court. They have to make the shot, but it looks like they're just going to play for, to keep their guns. They're going to save, I believe. Like, very silly. They're not going to I respect rush. that. I, I, I do respect that. I think that's probably the smart play here because even if you lose this round, again, you're, you're up on the games. Um, the Saints, even if you are able to kill them, pick them off, they still have the, mo the money advantage. They would still be able to buy the next round, whereas University of Windsor, they can't buy next round. They can't afford to. So at least next round, they can still play poverty, but they'll have the guns to actually make an impact in the St. Clair College economy. Or if they are feeling confident, then they can use what little money they do have left over to bolster their defense and go go for broke and try to clean the round flawlessly and just completely destroy the side of the Saints economy. Definitely playing the economic side very, very well. They have a few rounds to burn, so 11 to 8. 
They're still not too worried, but now it's looking much, much more winnable for St. Clair. They're winning a few rounds now, mm -hmm. and maybe we're right. Maybe this is just an attacker-sided map since it seems playing the aggression is really the play here, as we're seeing. Potentially, but I, I do really think what it comes down to is, is the confidence that University wow. Windsor has. Wow, <laughs> completely flooding that entire alleyway. Smokes are going to go down now. Two, University Windsor has their defense completely planned out. Rye and Miggy are not going to survive that exchange, and that's more guns. Everybody is fully armed on the side of University Windsor, except for the man holding the um, mag, that shotguns. In fact, I'm going to hold my tongue because I know what shotguns can do <laughs> when used properly. So potentially could be be a high impact shotgun but Andy holding the op the more conventionally favorable gun as he's baiting out potentially trying to hop it's around that baited. corner bait the shot I think he might have well, seen him yep well that was a the op is. <laughs> very low very uh very late shot but he went for it anyways um now JBH and Petro seeing what they can find here rotating up through mid Sly Fakey is holding that angle though, and DCS throwing out the frag just to give him a clear sight through. Whether or not he's going to commit for it is yet to be oh. seen, but there's going to be an exchange found here. Petro going around the corner, he sees one, now there's none. Going to get the kill immediately, almost got that pick off Andy, but oh, from behind, Petro's going to get around, finds three now, I believe, and that's going to be an opening for them to get the bomb planted. Molly's going to go out, time is going to be purchased for his teammate. It's not, a, it's not an item you can buy in the shop, but it is an item you can earn through your actions. Time is of the essence, but JBH is eventually going to go down. It's just Petro left with three already under his belt. If he could turn this into an ace, that would be incredible. Yeah, he needs the ace now more than ever. It just needs to burn out the time. Stay alive as a keeper with only 13 health to his name. It's going to be very, very tough. He hears the defuse. Going to go for the nade. Flash him out. He's going to go in. He's pushing for it, oh. and he gets just baited out here and taken down. You Windsor gets the defuse and takes another round. Very well done by you, Windsor. Again, most situations like that, you would hesitate, like, oh, uh, you know, we still got time. We got to keep delaying. We got to make sure we don't die here. They bomb is planted. Let's go. And they went and <laughs> defused it, you know? <laughs> you can't take too long in these circum um, circumstances. And again, unfortunately, Petra was holding the wrong angle um, for the most part there. Again, you can't know for sure where they're going to come from, but wasn't able to watch the correct one that time. Exactly. He's very far from the bomb. <laughs> really bad position to yeah. be in. No sight lines. Nothing to guard. Nonetheless, here we are. Back in the next round. And wow, the Saints are being very aggressive. Taking a lot of mid control here. Molly trying to push him into the corner here. Stops the push at least, and now it's a little bit farther back here. He's playing very, very reactively. No picks have come out from either side, but I have a feeling it's going to change very, very soon. So now they start to push up. The flash comes out. They play very defensively, not push up too far. Prep a Molly, but that's not what you want to do. Sky Fakey gets two there, and now. The Saints are in a little bit of disarray here. They find one though, and they find two right back. It's dead even once again. And they're gonna try and take in their <laughs> way, but no, Sly Vicky gonna get another kill. That's three for him. And just like that, things are looking very bleak for St. Clair. They are holding on to guns, but Miggy finding Sour Man, taking it now to be 2-2. Two, two. University Windsor on their last round here. If they win this one, they win this game. That's all it's gonna take for them to take it but St. Clair College does not want to let that happen. They plant the bomb, and now they're holding angles a little bit indecisively as he's already rotated off to the other side, but they already have Mickey holding this one, so no need in having doubling it up. And they find both their marks there. The Saints are able to take the round, and now it's 12 and nine. I believe we weren't on the mic at the time, but I told you these games are gonna be pretty close. We're gonna yes. see like 13 nines, 13 tens. So even if, or maybe, you know, if the Saints are able to pull this through, it could be 13-12, or, well, I guess it would have to go to OT, but still, I do believe that these games are going to be pretty close overall. Yeah, they're definitely making this, uh, giving us some very, very interesting and good games. It looked like University of Windsor was going to completely run away with it there, but yeah. as we've seen, St. Clair College is just going to push the aggressiveness here to the max, take these attacking rounds in a major lead here. Pushing up. Your first wins are just does have pistols here. Make you gotta find it. a nice two-piece there. Sour man can get <laughs> two <it> right piece. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, someone's hungry. <laughs> but Ash is going to be the only one there. Petro is going to be the one that takes him out. And it's just one on the site now. They're going to find wow. him. In a, a bit of a visually confusing flick. But he... <laughs> Finds the mark, and it's going to be a rotation from Sour Man, seeing if he can just do a little bit of economic damage to round this off. But something tells me he's not going to be able to get the defuse. No, I think he's going to just play to keep his gun and keep uh, the Saints on their toes here into the next round. They still are in the lead. They have one or two more rounds left to burn, but they want to get this win and quick. But uh, one thing I do want to comment on is I loved hearing the five panicked deagle shots of that little weird <laughs> up-close exchange there. Yeah. I love the comedy in this, but also the horror is about to happen as a jump scare comes out from the Saints as they lose two of the members right at the end. That's bad. <laughs> That's that really awful. bad. I mean, they do have the money on uh, on Rai. He, he's got, he had 10K at the start of this round, so he, he can't buy, if anything, but... You got to go three rounds without losing. You don't want to be dropping dollars if you don't need to. Uh, again, U Windsor was already poor that round. Sacrificing two for potentially taking a gun from them, which was an AK. Perhaps it was an act. Like, they probably wasn't planned. They just ran into him, tried to get the pick off because it was there. But I would not have pushed for getting the kill there. Just played safe, if you ask me. But they're going to go down, losing Rai at the start of the round. Things are not looking good for him. Uh, their richest member down. But the rotations are still coming up from the Saints. It looks like they're going to be trying to push for a site, But they have their bomb carrier on the other side of the map by himself, right next to an enemy. <laughs> this is... So this could end very badly for the Saints if something isn't done. He's really committed to holding this angle. Very committed, scarily very committed, committed to holding this angle. Uh, to, to be fair, rotating from here would be a bad idea because he would have to give up his position and just reveal himself even further. But the Saints are now kind of what playing. <laughs> it, is a, it is literally a standoff. The first person to move will probably die. Uh, this is scary. Oh, oh, oh what a okay. pick. All right. That's the noise being made. Okay, they have a teammate here now. They have the rest of the boys. So one goes down, but now they know where he is, but not fast Close enough. JBH is going to go down as a result as well. But the bomb carrier is still up. The bomb's not going to go down. But Mickey finding a beautiful shot across the site. And that's going to be two for him. Two headshots. They're going to go for the plant, putting it right in the center. So it's easier to hold. And now University wins are for the retake. It's 2-2. Two, two. They have all the armor. They have all the guns. Petro's really low, but he's got a lot left in him. Him. He has the molly, he has the AK, everybody here is armed, and it's going to be just as dangerous. But the Arc being able to find a way onto the site, past them, Donks is going to find Petra with one bullet. That's all they really needed, but no! They aren't going to be able to stop the retake from University of Windsor. Miggy is going to go down, and that's going to mark game one for University of Windsor. That's going to be 13 to 10, and that's going to be the first game under our belts for tonight. And an amazing first game to start. Very, very close. Back and forth once we switch the sides. But yeah. University of Windsor just really stayed in control there. Like you said, being very analytical on the economy. Mm -hmm. Being very, very patient. And very, very reactive. Managed to pay off dividends. Right. Like I said, for me, what I feel like distinguished both teams that game was the type of patience that they demonstrated. Uh, University of Windsor's patience was calculated, was intentional. And they were patient because they were patient intentionally. Yes. Whereas I felt like the Saints were patient out of fear, out of anxiety, and they kind of let some opportunities slip by or put themselves in situations that they didn't need to be put in because of that patience. But ultimately, they did manage to, I feel like, find their footing throughout that map. Again, it's a weaker map for them, but University of Windsor playing so excellently kind of brought them together at the end. Yeah, it was less like patience and more hesitation. Basically. They just kind of doubted their own abilities, doubted their own plays, and mm -hmm. maybe was anxious, like you said, about what U University of Windsor had planned because it seemed like they always had a plan in store. They always had some angles covered. They always had, you know, where to move, when to flash, always had a teammate covering another teammate's back. Mm -hmm. Of course, that was the same for St. Clair College, but it just seemed like University of Windsor was a little bit more organized every single time. And <laughs> And honestly, it's just come to my head now, but some of those last round kills or it, like the end of round decisions, you know, when the bomb is planted and it's just one CT left, for example, the way both teams played in those circumstances was also quite different. The Saints would 
kind of overextend, if you ask me, to try to find the last guy. And if I feel like in that last exchange there where they did opt to chase the last guy left and he found two, I think that actually did have pretty heavy implications oh, going to the last round because they weren't able to afford some utils or some better guns that might have been able to kind of carry them forward to victory, at least in that round. But in any case, we still have so much more action to get through throughout the rest of the night. So we have 1-0. University of Windsor is proving themselves to be a formidable enemy. The Saints are going to have a lot of work cut out for them to take this next game back. But before we get to that one, we're going to take a short break and we'll see you all very soon soon.
Hello, everybody. We're right back into the swing of things. Here we are. University of Windsor versus St. Clair College. University of Windsor taking the first game, and wow, they're starting off with a bang here, getting a few picks back and forth. It's pistol round. What are you thinking of this, Daniil? I'm thinking it is some intense action. This is a very emotionally charged series. These schools are rivals through and through. Petro and Ricias are going to be finding some marks on the point. They are going to be starting on the terrorist side. Saints are going to be taking this first pistol round with four kills going to Rye. Very well done, and it's a strong showing to get things started. Very strong showing indeed. Getting a little bit of deja vu, though. They did start it out very strong in the first game, so you know, you don't want to have it be a complete retelling. Hopefully St. Clair College you know, mends the story in the remake, and maybe they'll come out with the win this time. I'm not sure if this is a map they like playing on, but Vertigo is at least a map I've seen this team playing on a lot. So hopefully they are at least a little bit more comfortable here than they are on Ancient, but we're going to have to see how comfortable they are maneuvering this map, the strategies that they have cooked up, as well as being able to adapt to what University of Windsor has to bring to the table. And from what we've seen so far, University of Windsor has a lot to bring to the table as they gave the Saints a hell of a run for their money in the previous round, taking the first game as the University of Windsor is now leading the series. But St. Clair College, they don't want to take this lying down, and they're already fighting back, but not this round, perhaps, because yep. they've already lost one. But Dunk with 11 HP, perhaps it was a little bit of a Fyrick victory. Now, <laughs> Indy damaging a teammate. Maybe it was just a nade bounce hitting him there, but the smoke is going to clear. His head is visible. I'm not sure if Dunk saw him there, or I'm not sure if, uh, if he was able to spot him as well on the side of the Saints. Flash coming out, and Petro rotating over to a side. Looks like the Saints want to go for a little bit of a sneaky push up ramp. For having the gun advantage, they are playing very cautiously. They don't want to let their round lead slip away from them, but... University of Windsor is playing very confidently. They did get a nice early pick with the Deagle, so they're going to keep on trying to stay in control of this match here. Right now, hiding behind the concrete, playing very, very, good very spot. carefully. Very good spot indeed. He has a pistol. Three are lined up. He's such triggered this one. Gets one, gets two, and he's going to get shut down by Petro, but getting a two picks there, making it a 4v2. It's a very, very good job on the side of University of Windsor. And now, time is ticking. Ooh, Petro gets one on the bridge there. And now, finding a long-range pick. Sly Fake, he gets the pistol kill. And he gets the sprays. He's very, very low. Only one left. He does have a gun. Will he get the two pick? But he does uh -oh. not. Sly Fake, he's going to get two picks instead. That's going to be on the first round going over to University of Windsor. University of Windsor demonstrating that they have nerves of steel. Lesser, a lesser team there would have crumbled under the pressure for sure, but they were able to pull that one back and take the defuse. Look at them. Such a... Oh, oh, oh. Ah, oh, come on. Please turn around. Oh, oh. my god. I. They're going to lose the next round because of that. I wish... <laughs> that, as long as I live, that's going to haunt my memories, and I'm never going to know the outcome of that. If we do ever talk to these players, if we do do an interview, I need to ask him if he ever <laughs> did end up bumping his fist, because that's going to keep me up at night, that's for sure. But what's going to keep the Saints up at night is if they don't win this round, as they're not in a very good spot right now. If they could manage to get a thrifty round for them, that would be a massive. But they're just going to go loud, they're going to go proud, they're going to play very aggressive. Trying to be a Deagle Demon there, but he misses both shots. Peppers him down. Dodging. Doesn't get the kill. He does. Petro gonna get one. It's 4v4 right now. But just as I say that, it is not looking great for the Saints. It is 2v3, 1v3, and 3v0 as the University of Windsor just takes them all. Down. Absolutely incredible. The Saints must be just really scratching their heads here, wondering what's going on, you know? Uh, it's it's they had a strong start, you know, the pistol round was convincing, but <laughs> From there, uh, you, you have to keep winning more rounds, you know? You, you can't just win the pistol rounds and just have it be that. It seems like uh, that missed fist bump got him out of his chair. He's uh, <laughs> very excited. Locking Screaming. <laughs> Wants to be noticed. <laughs> Nonetheless, like you said, Saints finally have some guns in their hands, but the uh, economy is just booming. The University of Windsor right now, they do still have an op. The Saints are going to have to play against that. It's going to be very tough here. But maybe 
some calculations, they might be able to make this work. Pushing up through the ramp, but they... Oh! Alan's just going to be able trade. to find one pick, but it's going to be a trade. 4-4 four, four now. The Opper is still in play. Alan's just going to find another one, but finally Alan's just going to go down to two kill, having member of University of Windsor. Now, it's going to be on the rest of the team to find some pickoffs. Going to be allowing the rest of that team to put some kills on the board. But the Saints, uh, you know, they see the dead bodies there. They don't want to keep pushing over. They're going to try maybe rotating to the other site that has dead bodies. But the Molly is going to stop the push from Andy. He was making the rotation, and their spidey sense got triggered, recognized it, and just put a halt to it briefly. But it's not going to stop him forever. He's going to keep pushing through office here. But mid of the map. Ooh. Going out the corner, pre-firing a little bit there, almost found him the kill. Flashes and smokes are going to be coming out with Drew coming out with the rotation. And he could catch him off while he tries to push through Sour Man. It's a very tense situation right now. They have to play very carefully. Whichever team gets the first pick will be in a major advantageous spot. Wow, he gets down to 1 HP, but he gets taken out. We've got to trade anyways. Bolts are flying into 2v2. The op is still up. Hear the op shot come out, trying to get a blind fire, trying to get a lucky shot, but the bomb is going to go down for the side of St. Clair. They're in a decently good spot. University of Windsor in, their <laughs> in a bad spot. They have to make a push here. With an op in hand, it might be kind of tough here. It might be tough is an understatement. Anytime I see a smoke cloud on this map, it just shows the value that smokes really have. I feel like it, <laughs> of all maps, they're the most impactful here. But that's just me talking. Mickey's going to find two. JBH is actually going to pick up that last one. The retake is not going to be a success. The Saints are going to tie this up 2-2 two -two now. We're already looking a lot closer um, than the first game. But the Saints are looking locked in, especially Coach AP there. Look at him. So focused. He is focused, logged it, locked in, and ready to coach his teammates, you know. That's what you really need. You need someone kind of out of the game, you know. It doesn't have the nerves as everyone else, able to really analyze the game objectively. You know, that's going to be an advantage. It leads them to victory. But you never know. University of Windsor has always managed to pull something out right when you think the Saints have it. Exactly. Might not have the aim as the real coach, JBH, but, you know, he can still provide that out of game support in between timeouts. But Anj is going to be looking for the pickoff there. Sour Man is going to take down Rai CS. Drew, in a very familiar circumstance, JBH making the push through mid. Petro almost finds the pickoff onto Sly Flaky, but Drew is going to find JBH through that rotation on mid side. But. Miggy gonna get brave. He's gonna pay for it dearly. Curiosity killed the cat after all, but Petra wants to kill whatever killed him. Not gonna find that pick off there, but now they're aware of his presence. He's the last one standing for the Saints, but can't, if he can get anything done here, will remain to be seen. If he can get at least one pick off, there he finds it. Two, wow. rather. He wants to go for broke and make them broke for trying to put him to a stop, but around the corner, Finds one, finds two, oh. and takes the round with a 4K. That's gonna be a round for the Saints, taking things two to three. Excellently done <laughs> and unshaken. Beautifully executed. <laughs> yeah, AP there, looking very proud of his teammates. You saw a little bit of a, of, a, of a smile there, but he quickly locked back in. Yeah, and you don't want smileys for the week. You know, it's just one round. You don't want to look too impressed, but mm. that's just light work for them. They get four kills on the I mean, regular. <laughs> ap after that first map, I feel like any round win is, a, is worth celebration. Yeah. The Saints definitely got put through the ringer on that first one. But, like I said, this map is another opportunity to distinguish themselves as skilled players, but it's going to take a lot of work, as I always love to say, because it, it is what it is, you know. Playing against other people who are around your skill level and also trying to win is a very difficult task, just like it's difficult to survive a bullet to the head. Sour Man demonstrates that using Miggy as a lovely assistant. Going to go down. Now we're looking at 4-4, four, 4-3, four, four, rather. Smoke too soon. 3-3, three, three, smoke even sooner than that. But the bomb is going to get left behind amidst the chaos. It looks like they're going to just have to push for the TDM victory. And Andy got to find a beautiful Glock shot to take down Sly Fakey. Sour Man, the last man left. Holding a Deagle, though, he is not anything to be trifled with. Rai CS coming up, and they looks like they want to get aggressive. He did go back for the bomb. He's going to be getting the plants off, but it's going to be a lot of work for Sour Man, especially with a low HP bar like that one. 
a lot of work is even an understatement. It's almost insurmountable. 14 HP. He's not even going to try to work on this. <laughs> I respect he's it. He's going to procrastinate this and just try to live, not give the extra Pick money. up a gun and, and, you know, just go home. I respect there that. There you go. An AK. That's a nice upgrade going into the next round. It'll make it a little bit tougher for the Saints to play the way they did here. As University, University of Windsor really had no weapons to speak of this round. Not much to work with, like you said. But this is going to be another round going the way of the Saints. But I feel economically, they're all actually going to be around the same level. The Saints are going to be holding on to guns and holding on to a lot of money. But University of Windsor, they're going to be holding on to the, about the same amount of money. So they're going to be going into this round with about the same armory. But in terms of economy university of windsor will be feeling the pain after that last round but it's still going to be even all the way through the saints if they lose this one they will probably be in the same circumstance that university of windsor finds themselves in right now but it's all going to come down to how many deaths go out if university of windsor loses too many then it will be tough for them pushing up onto b side potentially but the bomb is going to get dropped in the middle so they can rotate to anywhere they find an opening relatively quickly jbh is going to find the pickup on dunk giving them an opening around the middle to a side but they are going to find that pickup on JBH as well. Mid is going to get flashed up. They're holding this spot down like a hawk. They know the Saints want to play around this spot a lot. Sour Man is going to be holding down that ramp angle. Sly Fakey is probably going to try to get a rotation off to get over to B-side because that's where a lot of those nades are coming from right now. Rice CS is going to wow. go down and she's going to take that kill, but they're going to be hiding behind that box. Petro, ooh, actually he is not out of this fight yet. Going to do a lot of lighting up on, this, on the CT there, but but he is going to retreat, ultimately get out of that with his life and with his gun. More importantly, Sly Thinky is going to be looking at the wrong spot at the wrong time. Mickey is going to find two, in fact, but he's going to go down in midair. He was not able to find that shot onto him, but Anj is going to go down to Petro, finding his way onto b site. The bomb is coming as well, and unfortunately, the Sour Man is on the other side of the map virtually, so there's not going to be a lot of opportunity for him to stop this bomb from going down. Yeah, he can't stop him, but maybe he can defuse it. It's a 1v2 scenario. If he can find a pick, he might have a chance. But it's going to be very tough. He finds one. Can he take him down? He's behind the skill guard. He's going to throw out a grenade. And he gets the grenade kill. And Beautiful. now it's a 1v1 situation. Flash toward the Molly, throwing out everything he has to try and start the defuse. He starts it, makes it up, but looks like St. Clair College still manages to get the kill. Very well done by the Saints, and it's just going to show that even just something like a change of map can do so, so much for the confidence of the players. Now, it is two to five. We do know for sure that University of Windsor has it in them to bring this back. Maybe not this round because of the poverty factor, but they can still do a lot of damage in the next coming ones. But like I said, even in that first uh, ancient game, they lost the pistol run, but won the round after, which through uh, all calculations, you shouldn't. So yeah. they might even still be able to pull a victory off of this one. Definitely. It's going to be tough, but hey, we've seen crazier things happen. But JBH going to get one. Don't get to the trade, though, on JBH with the mere pistol. So Maybe that weapon upgrade will be what they need to maybe take a few more out in this round, make it very expensive for St. Clair. And now Bomb is down. They're not going to give away exactly what Ooh. that is. Wow, Sour Sorry. Was pick. <laughs> yeah, well, that was just clean. <laughs> <laughs> very clean, but that's not very clean. Getting the sprays almost gets the kill. Just barely gets out a little bit of a messy gunfight. But hey, that's oh. pretty good on 1v2. That was clean. And now he's going to try and flush out the last one with a grenade. Doesn't manage to find it, though. I apologize for the noise there. But listen, this is my favorite part about CS. You can talk about tactics. You can talk about strategies all you want. But at the end of the day, seeing someone pull off long shots like that with such precision and confidence is just a sight to behold. Sour Man gonna get a headshot through the smoke there. Molly's gonna force him back really far back, a lot further back wow. than he probably wants to be. It's gonna, in fact, completely clear up the side for the a save. Grenade. And the grenade toss is gonna take him out. That's the one thing I don't, I will never pretend to understand about this game. But before I speak on that matter, Donk is getting brave and confident. He's gonna walk right off the side. In fact, he has every right to. He's got nothing to lose, but an AK, it's not gonna do too much work. And what hasn't the AK ever done for him? Not much, but it might save his life here as the smoke starts to dissipate. It's not going to have his back. So he was right to go for that push. Again, if he saved that AK, 
it, like the rest of your team is yeah. still poor. You, you can't get too much done with it unless they, again, want to go for broke and spend every cent they have and charge with your AK, then, you know, they're probably going to play conservatively this round and save whatever money they have. I spoke you are wrong. completely wrong. As they <laughs> throw everything they have at zero dollars round, zero dollars in op, every rifle, every ordinance you could have, every defuser, not sparing any expense for this next Which round. Which is probably the right play, uh, because well, is it though? As they lose one out of the gates, they lost their opera out of the gates, actually. So, uh, in hindsight, maybe not the right play, but on paper, I can understand the rationale behind it, but I'll get to that after the action has settled down. JPH is going to go down in mid, as usual, but the Molly is going to come out just to make sure that nobody is hiding around those sacks of cement, and at the same time they're pushing A, they're actually going to be kind of pushing B with a boost, seeing if they can find Ansh uh, with a cheeky pick off there, but the off seems to have been picked up on the side of University of Windsor, but they are able to find Ansh. Smoke is going to go down. Oh, but no! Not fast enough. The smoke just pops as he makes that push through, and Dunk isn't going to be able to find the kill on him thanks to his un godly aim it's so powerful but they are going to get the plant there's not much the university ones could have done to stop that from coming out but they have to decide whether or not they're going to want to go for this retake if you ask me i really strongly would advise against at least i would send the op guy back that's my opinion <laughs> but they're going to go for it nonetheless, and in fact, the op guy being here is instrumental to their success so far. The molly's coming out, holding it. It's lit, throwing it out onto the site, but the smoke is going to make sure it's not going to be able to do too much. But regardless, the bullets aren't going to get stopped by that smoke cloud. It's going to go down, and that's going to be another round for the Saints. I don't mean to jinx it. The Saints are doing amazingly right now. 7-2, to two. University of Windsor once again. Not being able to get any footing in these rounds. They got two rounds earlier in the match, but it seems like, look at that round percentage there. They only got two defuses. The Saints have gotten the bomb down at least every time they don't get a total team wipe. So <laughs> the Saints are just in an amazing spot right now. For sure. And I believe the uh, Lost Street bonus might be allowing them to afford some extra doodads here and there inside the University of Windsor. Um, some fancy pistols, 5.7s, deagles coming out. Those are the guns that you're going to want if you're going to want to be playing playing fast and hard, and that's exactly what they're going to be doing, but it's going to be on the side of the Saints to take this round in their initiative. Yeah, it's all up to them to take initiative here, and initiative they do as Saints get a pick, though, on Dunk. Saruman going to get one right back on Migs. Now pushing up, the flash comes out, He's chasing him with a rifle, JBH gets one, will another University of Windsor fall down as they all collapse in on him? That's going to be JBH and Ryx going to get that one, and now it's down to just one more sour man. Here he is, Deagle in hand. He's going to be sour after this one, I bet. Oh, oh I would be misses. sour! Will he get another oh, pick? No. Oh, no! That doesn't land a single shot there oh. as JBH cleans it up. And the Saints continue their domination. What a damn shame. Those were two potentially career-changing headshots. I, if I was evil geniuses and I saw those flicks, I would have picked them up right then and there. But he's not going to be able to get them, unfortunately. But University of Windsor has shown us already that they're capable of a lot, of a lot nastier uh, on the battlefield. But right now, it seems that the Saints have their number. Vertigo seems to be their comfort spot, at the very least, based off of this current scoreline. But like I said in the last game, either this is the most attacker-sided map of all time, or, again, it seems that the Saints have probably just figured them out here. But the, either way, they have a lot of money in the bank, an op on the side of the Saints, and an op on the side of University of Windsor. They haven't given up on that strat yet, which I respect. You never want to change your game plan just because you feel like you're losing. You only want to ever adapt, which would be to change your game plan to better fit your opponent's strategy, but you don't want to stop Ooh, doing something. Exactly. I completely lost my train of thought there. Yeah, that that, was that shot was... So clean. <laughs> Very clean, and finally the office paid off. Mig's gonna find one, but it looks like Anish is gonna find one right back. Four St. Clair College finally on the back foot here, as it looks like University of Windsor has found their stride with these guns. They are playing very, very well. Their positioning's good. And St. Clair now slowing right down to a snail's pace as they want to figure out how to play this correctly. They haven't been in the disadvantage state in quite a while here. 
pushing in very slowly, checking all the corners. Don't want to screw up their lead here. Go left. The go left. <laughs> I just want to be the voice in his head. Go left. Do it. You know you want to. You know you want to. But he is going to go left ultimately. But whether or not that's going to work out in his favor is going to be found out in about 0.5 seconds. And <laughs> no, it didn't happen. But maybe he's still alive. Five seconds from now. Oh, oh there, there it is. It's a point five. Yeah. So I'm going to find a pick. That was a two v four scenario. And wow, he finds the Woo. pick with the op, making it a two v three. The no way. Doesn't hit the deagle shot, but he's going to try and put the plant down. Teammate covering him. JBH Jimmy. gets the cover. Only two more left. Will they flood in onto the side? You want to spend your nades. You want to spend your nades if you're JBH here. He's not going to get the opportunity to. The op shot's going to go missing. Andy going to try to find the next one, but no, he's not going to find that flick. Desperate for it, but he's not going to get it. Then that's going to be around for University of Windsor. Their investments are paying dividends now. <laughs> they got two ops to work with. They seem to love ops on this team, but hopefully they're going to be able to make it work. Yeah, the ops, they're tough. If you can really make them work, they work hard, but you know, if get an early pick, you risk giving it up to the enemy team, and then it's in their hands. But that's with every weapon, but the op is just so devastating in the right hands, and right now it's a risk for University of Windsor, because it seems to just be working out for St. Clair if you look at the scoreboard, but hey, things are starting to switch up now. One more round in the half, if I'm not mistaken. No. One more indubitably, but you just gotta spend every penny that you can. Make sure you don't have any regrets by the end of this half. The Saints want to make this a comfortable 9-3. And University of Windsor wants to take this to half and half. You know, it feels like the Saints have been dominating thus far. But when you really break it down, you know, if University of Windsor wins this one, then it'll be 4-8. to eight. They've won four more games than they have, but five more sounds scarier, so they definitely want to take this. But scarier than that is the op shot sound, and scarier than that is the headshot sound coming out from the AK-2 now being heard thanks to Petro's marksmanship as B-side is going to get cleared out, smokes are going to be laid down, and it's going to be an impenetrable fortress of fluffy clouds that University of Windsor is going to have to push through. Fluffy protective clouds. Gonna throw out a fire. <laughs> and now it's not looking great for University of Windsor as we stu see. Is this a flank? Is this Trade gonna be a massive point. flank coming out from St. Clair College? He finds one. That was does he way. find two? He does not. He gets shut down, but there's still two left. It's a little bit of a face off happening right now. Throw out the ordinance. They're in a very good spot. Woo! They find one. Only one left on the side of University of Windsor. They want to make it half and half. But there you go. As goes over to St. Clair College once again. Once again, the Saints are taking us into another half, though this time the happy shoe is on their foot while the sad shoe is on the <laughs> University of Windsor foot. I wanted to say the shoe's on the other foot, but I have to distinguish, you know, which shoe you want. Sometimes Everybody wants a happy shoe. Exactly. Sometimes you have a hole in your shoe, and that's kind of the bad shoe. You don't really want to wear that shoe, but hey. Someone's got to wear it. You need two pairs of shoes. <laughs> Does somebody really need to wear it? <laughs> I think some shoes hey, can go unworn. Yes, go. You have to. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Someone yeah. always has to be losing. No one can really win. Overtime goes until there's a break, but it looks like it's not going to go into overtime. Put on the sad unless, shoe now. <laughs> unless University of Windsor can manage to be very strong on this attacking side. We saw it before on we Ancient. Did. We'll see if it's the same way here. But it's looking not to be the case as Rikes gets the first kill. Rai is going to be an excellent marksman showing us time and time again that he can find those head clicks whenever he needs to. But with the, the amount of pressure coming out of University of Windsor right now, already getting the bomb plant, it's going to take more than marksmanship to win you the round, and that's going to come down to the tactics, and he's going to be able to find a headshot, but Sour Man's going to get the return kill, Scott Slyfink is going to find another, and Anch is going to as well, but they get the defuse amidst the chaos, and even going to be able to try to wipe them, taking out the knife, No, he didn't have many options left, he was going to try to go for a stab, but... That's going to take out the round. And just again to remind you, the the way that this game is going is uh, <laughs> kind of reminiscent of Ancient, but the Saints are no. dominating a lot harder yeah. um, than than uh, University of Windsor won this was in that one. At least at this point, I believe they Saints had, had like four. eight or something five? like that. Yeah, they something did have like eight. That. Yeah, it was much, much closer. I think they had five and they managed to win Actually, two early rounds. No, I think this is going about the same. Because I think I think it was once, yeah, once the Saints switched four. sides yeah. around, yeah. So we're we're basically in a mirror mirror world. But whether or not the University of Windsor squad is going to be able to turn things around, 
that's going to be what we're going to be finding out shortly. Very aggressive, and it does not pay off as Sly Piggy gets a nice double. Beautiful patience underneath the stairs. You got to check every angle, even the ones under the floorboards, as it can really come back to bite you in the butt. But Petro finding one, two now with the SMG. These things are my favorite guns to use, my friend, because nobody sees them coming, and they can just cause so much havoc, and they cost so little. It just adds extra insult to the injury. But the fire is dissipating on the Mickey. side of Mickey with the FAMAS is just a terror to deal with. Going up with the SMG, they might try to get aggressive here, they might try to push, or they can just hold where they are. And that seems to be the play that they're going for, just peeking around the boxes, and he's gonna mow him down as a result. That's gonna be another round for the Saints, just two more to win the series. You said it feels like a flip world here, a little bit of a mirror dimension of the last match, <laughs> but I don't think that the Saints were uh, this far behind as the University of Windsor is far behind in this match. It seems like they're just continuing their dominance even into the defensive side. The University of Windsor really needs to lock in and try and find something that works here, but with no guns to their name, they're just gonna play for next, it seems, as they just decide to have a pistol round. I feel like I've been given the gift of premonition recently, because I didn't I say at the start of this, like, what dif what distinguishes a game like this is even if you're the strongest, best, most confident player, what's gonna come down to is the tactics, the strategies, and the confidence you have on the maps that you're playing, and it seems that while we're demonstrating before ancient, uh, you know, University of Windsor, maybe it's a map they're very strong on, maybe it's a map that the Saints are really weak on, but now that they've switched domains, things are looking very different for both teams, and Petro finding three very clean kills, Andy gonna take it to four, Miggy gonna take it to five, not a flawless round for the Saints, but it felt like it with such definitive kills. These are kills that you don't just get, these kills, are served to you, and you feel like a king for consuming them. <laughs> Just so well earned, and they're one round away from taking this game. One round away, but it might be a tough round, as University of Windsor did save that last round. They're able to buy everything that they need to make this work. If St. Clair can win this, this one's going to be going over them, and we're going to be going to a game three. That's what we love to see. Nonetheless, these are coming out. All the ordnance is being deployed. It's so going to be an explosive round, getting some wall shots there in the early game. Gonna back off here as the Molly pushes him back. Double the ordinance, double the damage. They're just chucking things back there, clearing <laughs> it out. Making the Saints play these weird off angles, and it might pay off because they don't check him. He gets one pick, but it gets traded up by Donk. As we see it, Mig move into that spot where his teammate died. You never check the same spot twice, he's thinking, and maybe it might work out for him. As he's continuing to push up, continuing to push, push the advantage, waiting for the rest of his team to roll up, though. He finds one, and they're going to have to back off here. And I believe they still have bomb, but they're not in a great spot. It's 3v4. They are in a disadvantaged state, but they might be able to make this work. Might. <laughs> they have to make it work if they want to stay in this game. They have no choice. The smoke grenade in the hands, just making some noise, baiting them out, and the grenades are going to come out. Smoke is going to go down, but I don't think that's going to deter them too much. I think they recognize the frantic nature of his retreat, recognize he's alone, but not alone for long as the rest of his team pulls up and puts him down. Finding kill, Anj <laughs> is going to find that pick off. Very well executed, but he's going to get well executed himself. Miggy finding that last kill, I believe. If it wasn't him, it was somebody. At this point, with the amount of kills that the Saints had on this map, it doesn't even really matter who got them. Just look at the headshot percentage on Rai, 90%. And Andy with the Ancient One, 11 minutes alive. He, he was a veteran in this game, barely tasting this release of death. But Unfortunately, University wins there. They can't say the same. They lost that 13 to three, if my short-term memory serves me correct. And very well played by the Saints overall. They have amazing plays all around. They're making this one interesting. We thought it might just go the way of you Windsor. While it was close, they were, you know, really in the driver's seat for the first game, mm -hmm. very much so. But here in the second game, it was just St. Clair all the way. You 100%. Know, a few rounds here and there went the way of University of Windsor, but overall, it was just utter St. Clair dominance. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it was probably just the map difference. And I, I don't want to take anything away from University of Windsor. Again, we've already seen what they are capable of, a destructive force in and of themselves. But the Saints were able to find their number here and just play around them so much more effectively. Um, again, that map is behind us, and so is Ancient. 
ancient history as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but the next map is going to be where it's all decided a 2-1. But which team is going to take it? We're going to have to find out. But based off of the performance we've seen from both teams in both of these maps so far, I really do think it can go anybody's way. Unless any of these teams have like a super strong um, map for the next one, then it's hard to say one way or the other. Yeah, it was just amazing. They're making it really, really interesting for us. They, of course, it's the land match, the one that goes all the way. <laughs> and we'll see. One went St. Clair side. One went University of Windsor's side. But hey... There's a game three on the way, just waiting for us. And don't <laughs> don't worry about it, because we're gonna throw it to a quick break, and we'll be right here back with it very, very soon.
You're here. Oh, <laughs> we didn't decide, but hey, like one person, one team got to win, the other team got to win. You know, we're both taking turns here. I'm Team Saints. You, you have to be Windsor. I'll now. take you, Windsor. That's how it is <laughs> on the camera. So we'll see who's going to take it all home here. But here we are in pistol round. It looks like University of Windsor is being taken out right there. Actually, it's a little bit backwards. I, 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 here we are getting picks back and forth right now. Mickey is going to be the first to go down. Rai followed after, and it's just a slaughter fest for the Sage. Sly Fakey finding three in a row. JBH is going to be the one to break that streak, however. But ultimately, he's going to be the last to fall as the University of Windsor squad wins the pistol round. Saints starting off on the T side overpass. Notorious map for a lot of different reasons. Notorious for me because of that door that is so darn fun to open and close. But it's also a hallway of death in a lot of different ways but in any case any way you swing it this map will be the final one we're seeing for the night and the final map these teams have to overcome to take this series home matthias we've seen a lot of things go down tonight but this is going to be the last thing we're seeing are you ready for the outcome that we're going to be having to face as a friend down the, the shotgun. shotgun gonna be finding so what is going on here okay wow. that could have been really bad for the saints but it is still <laughs> <laughs> regardless, they take down the madman with the shotgun, but eventually the last Saint's going to go down Petro, and now it's 2-0 and against St. Clair College. Yeah, I see my thoughts. My thought is head empty, shotgun in the hallway. <laughs> this is going very, very well for you, Windsor, at least just in the beginning, but hey. Now St. Clair does have some rifles in hands. They might be able to mix some stuff up. We'll see what they have in store here in the coming rounds. But hey, University of Windsor is starting off very strong. If they can carry this strength with them a little bit further, they're in a very, very good position. Throwing some mollies out, throwing some grenades out, using the op to get some information. Not going to see anybody, though. You see the grenade up in the air, smoking the below as well. There's the flash going out. It doesn't really find much, though. Now things are slowing down to a crawl after such an explosive beginning. And just like that, we have reached the fabled rare, but also not that rare moment in a CS game where everybody is just walking. Nobody is running. Nobody is doing anything crazy, be hopping, none of that. No nades being tossed. But it's all about information gathering. So the nades are finally going to go down. The molly is going to go on that ramp. They're kind of calling out the rotation successfully. Not going to get any damage off, but forcing him back for a little bit longer. The Saints are going to be holding lower park. Going to see if they try peeking out through middle. If they can find any pickoffs that way, it would be an excellent lead through into a site to burst it wide open. Two of University of Windsor are on B. Two of them are on A. Where's the third one? Don't see him on the mini-map. He's got to be somewhere, though. <laughs> but he lurking somewhere. He's got to be. He's lurking so well that even I can't see him, and I'm spectating. But in any case, JBH trying to push up, but he's not going to be able to find anything there. Flashes galore, making this so much more difficult for either Ooh. side. But Drew's going to find the flick. Andy's going to be able to get one pick off from earlier, but he's going to go down to that off shot. Now it's going to be a hard committal for A side. The rotations are coming out from B. Their bomb carriers all the way on spawn on the Saints, making his way over. It's like the marathon running all the way to deliver the message <laughs> to the army. From behind, though, Petro's going to find the pickoff. And now from the front, he's going to find the last one to round off the round. The Saints taking this two to one now. That's a very quick response from the Saints down two rounds, but now they're in. They finally got one to their names. Gonna carry this one a little bit further. They opt for an op Ooh. as they are investing heavily into this next round. Why not? You did win the last one. It's a Press treat. the advantage. It's a nice little treat. Yeah, yeah I earned it. Now, if they can earn the victory, ultimately that's what they're chasing. <laughs> like you said, holding onto the op. Now, nothing but deagles on siding University of Windsor. The initiative is gonna be on them to try to push and get pickoffs as many as they can because they know they're probably not going to be able to hold the site that well with just the deagles and their shotgun but i've sand i could stand corrected like Ooh. i stand corrected right now jbh gonna go down quite uh cinematically i feel like that was a shot from a movie very well placed but that, that one's an John oscar Wick. <laughs> shoot but i feel like that's an oscar winning shot right there uh took the performance stole the show and uh now it's going to force the Saints to reconsider their offensive strategy. And here 
they are. They have the off, they're playing slow. They just should play the long range now as these close range engagements have not worked out very well for them. And now, because of those early picks, two rifles have gone the way of University of Windsor, but Mig gonna find one out of the gate. And another one, that's a two piece for Miggy here. Gonna get the plant down, his team is guarding him. They're gonna try and stop it straight down. I think they do stop the plant. 40 seconds, they're gonna plant it again. They get it down this time, second time's the charm. Here they are, throwing out the mall, throwing out everything they have. They're gonna play back of the site. Op is a little bit up close here. He might be able to find a pick, smokes are down. It's the calm before the storm. What's gonna happen here? Will someone peek out? They have to do something, and quick, but hey, when there's an op down the lane, that's what's gonna happen here. Another one goes down, and another one goes down, and a and third goes down. Andy is an unstoppable force, even without the odd picking that last one with his block. Now we're tied up in this round, or in this game rather, tied up in the series overall too, so that wouldn't have been the incorrect thing to say. But we're not that tied up in the economy. It looks to be the case that the teams are going to have a lot of guns, but they're still going to be able to hold on to a lot of money, but University of Windsor is going to have to spend every dime they have left to be able to participate in this round equally. They're going to have to spend everything they got here to try and take a round, try and swing the economy their way. Saints just have to try and maintain their lead here. Got a flashbang here, but it's going to get answered with a molly. But, ooh, one pick goes the way of University of Windsor. They're going to get out pretty clean here. Try and slow him down. That's going to be a big grenade as well. It's a lot of damage over there on Miggy here. He's going to have to rotate out. Right now, University of Windsor are looking pretty good. They're up a player. The Saints are a little bit in disarray here, having to play very, very slowly. Very, very slowly, and just as slow. You gotta go steady, or else your aim will waver. Miggy getting brave and confident, but he's gonna opt to go inside, or he's gonna, oh, the shadow, visible, giving him the extra little bit of notice, but he's not gonna be able to utilize it to his advantage. So Miggy is gonna go around that corner and find the headshot with the AK. That's gonna be an opening now for the Saints. Gonna be rotating through Lower Park, maybe to get to Upper, or in fact, they're gonna go down the stairs and try to push B, it seems. Andy leading the charge with the op. Whether or not you want to see that is going to be it's going to be determined. Ooh. Petro finding that kill on that bank there. Now Sly Fakey is going to be getting the early pickoffs there, taking out two of the Saints, hiding behind those green barrels. Whoa. Three now, almost four, but Petro's going to put a stop to it. Coming on the corner, faking out the retreat, but he is going to get put down. Ultimately, Drew taking down the last Saint remaining. University of Windsor taking this three to two now. Yeah, that was an amazing play there over by the monster. Just <laughs> being a monster on the monster as he just got so many picks there. That really swung the round in you, Windsor's favor as it looked to be just going all the way for St. Clair there. Now the St. Clair, very low economy, spending all that they got to try and secure the position, try and even up the rounds once again. Meanwhile, you, Windsor, on cruise control here. Just still investing a lot, but has a little bit more ordinance to play with. Yeah, now everybody's equally poor in this game here. Everybody's equally armed as well, even everybody having at least one SMG holder, and he's gonna find the op shot. He's been such a threat with this op on this map so far, even the previous games, always opting to hold it in his hands. It's like his comfort gun, like I said before. Now, it's just gonna be 4v5. Saints are gonna have to choose a site and go for it with a minute and 15 left. Time is still on their side, but you don't want to misuse it. Every second does still count, however you have to make a commitment and try to execute it as near perfect as you can. Turning around at the absolute worst moment, Ash is going to at least reveal his position, but the Saints aren't going to be able to do too much about it. Rai is going to find Sly Fakey, but Rai is also going to go down to Ansh as he's going to make his return. Petro going to find Sour Man on the other side of the map, but now Mickey is going to find Ansh. Dunk is in that little tunnel there. They might meet each other. Petro's coming around the corner. He hesitated a little bit, showed his arm, and then eventually showed his head while Dunk was ready to click away. Rotating now over the B side as the Saints are getting ready to plant. It's up to Dunk to stop this from going through, or at least now to defuse it. But, well done, but hey, there you pop go. beats <laughs> that gun there when <laughs> someone's aiming right at you. Great angle coverage from the Saints, and now this is a very, very even map. Both maps before we saw kind of one team taking the lead, taking a big stance. But now, 
just dead even. Just trades and trades. Look, one, two, and then it goes one, two the other way, one, two, and then one right back. We're gonna see who takes the lead right here. And if it is University of Windsor, we're gonna still be trading back and forth. Indeed, Ooh, but the it halts, optimally, you don't even want to trade. You want to just take those kills. Economy is still looking pretty uh, even overall, but the Saints do have a couple of extra dollars to work with. Andy with the op, going to get flashed out, being forced to retreat. He's not going to have a hope in the world of stopping that push with the Deagle-wielding Sly Fakey. Now, they're going to be holding onto the big gun, and they're going to be able to look look to do some devastating things with it. Sour Man's going to find JBH in the hallway with dual Berettas. Not what you want to see if you're running through a hallway with an AK, but the Saints are going to be pushing forward nonetheless and clearing a path to A-site. Clearing the path, but will it be enough as one creeps up and finds that pick? Will he find another? No, he'll get shut right down, but it's keeping the Saints down in players even further. It's going to be very tough for them to defend this bomb. 4v2 scenario. Do have the weapon advantage against most of them, but still, it's going to be tough nonetheless. SMG is creeping up from behind. If they play the closest, it's going to be disastrous. To the far, they're going to have to deal with the op. And now, Mickey's going to find one, and both go down. And the University of Windsor does get the deep use. The trading continues. Trading indeed. University of Windsor going to be able to take this 4-3 thanks to the defuse. A lot of money in their pockets now. The Saints are going to have to do some conservative spending if they have any hope to take this map through the distance. And if it continues like this, every dollar is going to matter. They are going to opt for a pistol round here. Well, University of Windsor is going to be armed to the teeth. I think at the very least this round is going to be entertaining because St. Clair College is going to be running through haphazardly just firing away, just seeing what they can find. Yeah, it's all or nothing here for St. Clair College. They're gonna throw everything they have at the wall and try and take a few of them out, make it expensive as they can. But against all these weapons and more, it's gonna be very tough. The order is coming out for the University of Windsor. There's the Molly, there's the smoke, there's the flash. And it looks like they're all falling down, but it looks like and gets one and it gets shut down by Dunk. Now there's just two left on the side of the Saints. They're playing slow and steady, but it's not gonna be enough when they're down a hole, their teammates. Rotating through tunnels now. The Saints looking barren in the numbers department, dollars-wise and teammates-wise, four to two. But University of Windsor doing such a good job holding down these sites. The Saints are still gonna push forward all the same. Like I mentioned, it's a pistol round for them. They don't have a lot to lose on the gun side, but they're not going to find much either. Only getting the single pick off. You at least hoped you could find the opera there, but not going to happen for them. They're still destitute, but they're going to be able to at least afford the ever present AK 47 and see if they can do some real damage this round. And now someone's finally taken the lead here. It's going to be University of Windsor regaining a two-point lead like they had in the early game. That's up to the Saints to answer. They don't have as much to play with, but they do finally have some rifles in their hands. The economy looking very good on the side of University of Windsor. Right now, they're going to go fast and proud, sending everything they have at University of Windsor right now, pushing them out of their angles. They're trying to find some opening here. Nearly bomb back. Keep them guessing. He finds a nice early pick there. I think that's opt down. It it absolutely is. Now, whether or not someone's going to go scramble to try picking it up, um, in fact, it might be the killer who's going to be doing that, but he's going to meet Sour Man in the middle lane there. Somebody is going to have to go down for it, and it's going to be Sour Man, and he's going to be able to claim his beloved op, but not before he's going to go down. Anch is going to go down as well as Dunk on the A side of things. The Saints don't have the bomb. Again, this seems to be a common thing here. They are able to push their way to the site, but the bomb is too far behind. He's going to have to run a marathon. Thankfully, at least overpass feels like a small map, so making those uh, runs uh -oh. isn't the worst thing in the world, but Sly Fiki is taking Miggy out, and that does feel like the worst thing in the world, but Petro is going to take him back in revenge, and now we're 5-4. to four. It can't get any closer than this, really. Well, it can if they win the next round. That is as close as it can get. Truly. We will see if the Saints manage to continue their aggression here and push the advantage once again. But 
Looks like it's probably going to happen unless University of Windsor has some secret pistol strats up their sleeves. And buy mm. from us. That's all they have. Going cheap here is the right thing to do, I believe. Um, because if you lose this round and you go expensive, then you're really in a really bad situation. But at least if you kind of go cheap, see if you can get any guns through the battle, um, and you can heavily damage the state's economy, because they did have to go all out. And in fact, that's exactly what they're going to be doing. They're just going to be playing aggressively, playing right in their face. But three now wow. for Andy. It's not going to be cheap for University of Windsor. Their strategy, while effective, wasn't going to get flawlessly executed as long as the Saints have anything to say about it. So they are going to be able to break through that hold there and make their way into B site where only the Deagle wielding slide AP is going to be there to defend it and he's going to go down naturally. Last one remaining does have a FAMAS but I really, really don't think he's going to make any sort of push. I think he's going to play for exits. Maybe try and find a few picks here and there, but he's definitely going to give the round up just to keep himself healthy. Wow, that frag grenade almost spelled doom for him. Just barely missed him, and they're getting wall shots every angle, and he oh still my. goes down, playing it safe. And the Saints finally make a dead even here. Now it can't University. get closer. Exactly. <laughs> Not get closer than this. But will the Saints take the lead? University did give up that round just to keep enough money for this. Will it pay off is the question. Did that investment... Was that the right choice? Here's the best part about this round, though. In fact, everybody always notices when it's the last round of the half, but I feel like the most interesting one economically is the one before it, because you either try to get yourself the upper hand economically before it, or just save your money for that last round so you can spend all on here. It seems both teams are kind of going for a mix here. Both of them are spending a lot while also saving a lot. Um, Maybe not so much on the side of the University of Windsor, as they had a lot less money to work with, but they're not going to be spending everything that they can. They are still holding back at least a little bit, but the Saints are going to go all out and try to spend every dime. Um, and, of course, they're going to give Andy the, the op. Whether or not he's going to be able to make a mark with it is yet to be seen. Miggy's going to find the pickoff on Sly Fakie, but the rotation is still underway for the Saints. Sourman's going to find Petro in the hallway. Not what you want, not what you want, not what you want, but you're going to have to press on regardless. Press on is the name of the game right now. It's 4v4, and just as I say that, it's a 3v4 as Andy finds a nice pick around the corner. Do not know what's waiting for him now? Is it once again dead even 3v3? It's a very interesting round. Who's going to take it here? The op. Down the tunnel is a very good shot right now. Ooh. He sees the foot. He does not land it, though. He's going to have to get out of here. Turn around. Just him and his teammates here. Looks like St. Clair College is playing very slow, keeping University of Windsor on their toes, making sure they don't know what's coming next. As Rice has a nice double. Wow. And now the round is completely flipped. Now it's just going all the way in St. Clair's direction, but the op is still up. He saw him there. He's going in for it. Playing very close with this op, but he's going to go down. Tries for the no-scope. Rice, yeah, is going to get a nice triple in that round. I talk a lot about the economy here, and uh, this is no exception. Uh, I feel like in most circumstances, trying to save the op is the correct play, but once I can see the dollar values here, I... Mm, nah, I feel like, yeah. Saving the op doesn't really matter that round because um, it's not like there's going to be an extra round where you can affect the economy. It is just going to be every dollar here. I don't think the op would be game winning for them this round. So even though they're going to this round pretty poor, if as long as I have the ingenuity to pull it off, they should be able to cause some real damage to the Saints and maybe even take the round. But the Saints are still playing it slow. They leave the bomb behind to scout out any possible locations. It's very easy to lose the bomb on this map if you get picked off unexpectedly. But JBH almost lining up a perfect twofer, but not going to go his way exactly. He's going to go down, not for free though, but University of Windsor still holding on to five members. Yeah, University of Windsor playing very well right now. They did get a nice early pick. A quiet nice upgrade. As quiet as a mouse, they creep up this lane here. Do they know he's around the corner? He gets a pick, he pushes and he thinks it's safe. Oh, oh and he gets the quick shot! What a play, what a misplay! And now the Saints are just rolling through, laying down Molotovs, laying down everything they have, and laying down the bomb as they put this round, laying down all the rest of University of Windsor. I 
I feel like Andy's profile picture is very fitting because with the eyes he has, he, <laughs> he sees everything. He's able to trace you down and hit your weak points. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, that's a crying shame. But in any case, it's just two members of University of Windsor left to get this defuse. And it's going to be very difficult because Wright is already behind you. The smoke is going to go up, but he's going to have to lay in it. Now we're five to seven. It's going to get close and it's going to get scary, but University of Windsor is still far from out of this game. Definitely, it's not over till it's over, but that is a nice lead that the Saints currently have, especially if they can win the next pistol. That will put them in an amazing position just because of how close it is. Winning any sort of advantage here is massive going forward. But hey, it's going to be all up in the air until we can see how they adapt to this side change. Maybe this will go all the way to University of Windsor, or maybe St. Clark College is even better on defense. What's for certain, oh, sorry there, but what's for certain is the pistol round is always entertaining to watch for both teams. Definitely is entertaining as it can get. <laughs> I'm in the grenade, the flash. It's really thinking about getting the trajectory just right, waiting for the Plenty right moment. Though. But it looks like University of Windsor just is rushing right in there, don't getting the nice first shot there. They're going to be pushing all through mid, trying to find their way onto A, and it's going to be a shooting gallery for Petro right now, finding one, now two potentially. There it is, Ryze is going to find one for himself. Dunk is going to get the second one under his belt. Saruman next. Miggy is going to find another one onto Dunk, putting him down, but Saruman is the last man standing for University of Windsor, facing off against two Saints. He's able to get an eek out on one side, get some blood splots on both of wow. them, doing good. Good damage. This really can go his way as long as he holds his ground and remains confident. JBH is going to be a single sneeze away from death. It doesn't have to be someone sneezing on him. He could sneeze himself <laughs> and still go down. But whether or not he's going to try to take this site or try to rotate is yet to be determined. He doesn't he, he doesn't even have anything he could throw out to fake as a flash because all he has is his gun and the bomb. So he's going to have to make a commitment. One or the other, he finds a headshot to Miggy, and this is huge for him with 100 armor and 100 HP. All he has to do is find a single shot onto JBH to take him down. Doesn't even have to be a headshot. There he does. He finds it a headshot regardless just to make it look easy. He's going to take that round for his team in a stellar fashion. Patience really pays off, you know, not getting frazzled in that 1v2 scenario is what you need as just getting those little dinks over and over. Mm -hmm. The little chip damage really paid off just poking them over and over and over. Yeah, and while the players are finally just having a little bit of breathing time after such an intense game, they can just consider how they want to take this next few rounds. This is... I believe the first timeout we are seeing, yes. or it's actually the second one. I think the first one had a timeout, but that was a technical short. timeout yeah. because someone DC'd. This is the first timeout we're seeing. So this is the first time they're actually going to have the opportunity to really consider and just have some breathing room, whether or not that's going to be playing a role in these coming rounds. It happened regardless, and they just have to make peace with the fact that they're going to have to keep playing now. The guns-wise, University of Windsor is going to be holding on to most of the arsenal. The Saints lost the pistol round. That's just how it goes. It's going to be heavily favored for University of Windsor, but the Saints can still make something beautiful happen here. Andy looking to make that statement come true. Simon is going to take at least one down before Miggy takes him out. The Molotovs are going to be coming out from the Saints, forcing University of Windsor back a little bit. They're going to take his gun, a Galil in arms. Now coming down the stairs, JBH is going to find Anj after he takes Andy down. Petro is going to be leading the charge as they make the rotation over to B-Site. The rotation and the bomb has been planted for University of Windsor. Playing very, very well right now. Really using all that they have. But hey, looks like the Saints got a few picks as well, and that's two more down on the Saints side. All down to one. He does have an AK, but with the 1v3 scenario, time ticking down. Only a few seconds left. Great. Best of the pick. Trying to make it expensive, but it doesn't work. And now, that advantage St. Clair had in the last round is all for naught, as it's 7-7. Seven to seven. It's 7-7, seven to seven. indeed. 
I feel like this is like I it couldn't get per more perfect than this. One one-sided map, one one-sided map, and then you have a neck and neck really close. If this goes to overtime, I'm gonna call it rigged. They had to have gotten <laughs> part together. Of the script. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't know how you can get this perfect in terms of storyline. The Battle of Windsor has never been this beautiful to witness, if you ask me. But it's still far from over, especially if my prediction of an overtime comes true. It would just be the beginning of the night. Andy is gonna find Sour Man as the round gets started, doing a bit of damage to Donkey. He's gonna go down eventually to Petro in that middle. It looks like the University of Windsor might have hit a wall <laughs> a little bit too early there. Their offense getting stopped pretty succinctly, but they are gonna have their footing on B side. They put their foot in the door and they closed it on. They're still able to wedge their way in though. Wedge your way in onto site. The bomb is coming in tow. Rice is going to get another pick. Now, Saint University Windsor is also going down to one player. JBH getting a pick. It's all down to one. Smokes are coming out, and they all collapse in on him. Andy getting the last pick. Andy just being a, mass, a driving force in that last round. I think he got three kills, or at least got two, and an assist. That was an amazing round from Andy. He's having an amazing game. 18 kills on the board. Beautiful, and a lot of those on the op. Like, I'll never forget that beautiful no scope on the op he had in that <laughs> previous half. Just so well played, and again, very fitting with his profile picture. But as we're heading into this next round, eight to seven, University of Windsor still has a lot of life left in them. Not in their bank account though, but they can still get a lot of work done if they can find an early pickoff. I feel like that would do a lot for them in terms of their economy, as their gun lineup does lead to some fast and hard gameplay. If they can find those early pickoffs, then it will force the Saints to reconsider. Miggy, though, is, he saw Sly Whoa. and he is able to get the wall bank. He sees him move and he sees him enough to get the headshot. It's such a beautiful execution. <laughs> Through the eye of a needle there. <laughs> exactly. Now they're climbing the stairs and ooh, he gets a trade but does not manage to get out. As his teammate there cleans it up. Now it is a 3v4. They're down in guns, but they managed to upgrade some. This might be the round if you can just find another pick or two. Get into a very good position here. But with Bomb, they're kind of just waiting here in the middle of the map. They're not really finding any good spots to turn to. And they're met by the hall monitor there, the stair guardian, getting another pick. The Guardian of the Stairs. I like that title. It's very befitting. But Saints are kind of stuck in mid uh, these these tunnels here. Between a rock and a hard place, there's so many angles of attack that University of Windsor can come from. So they want to get out of there as soon as possible. But out of the frying pan and into the fire, Flash is all they have to make this easier for them. They also have a molly and a smoke. Or rather, actually, no, the Saints are going to be yeah. the ones pushing They're through. doing an amazing job They're doing right an now. amazing job, rather. Uh, it's going to be University of Windsor struggling here. Andy is the guardian of the stairs still <laughs> keeping a sharp watch. The flash is coming out. Sour Man now. He has to get brave. But he is going to get found from behind and from in front. Petro and JBH is going to be ending this round for us. Saints taking a big lead here. That's two rounds. We want it this close. Those two rounds start to add up. It was dead mm -hmm. even, but you know, it looks like University of Windsor is just unable to manage to make any advantage of their little round one, or their, their evening of the rounds. So now St. Clair, look at their economy. Look at the guns they're buying. They are just... Looking very, very strong right now. Looking to probably take this round and the next. Potentially, but this is how we started the series with University of Windsor holding nothing but pistols and dreams in their hand and then taking it to sweep basically the rest of the game. The Molly is going to go down, kind of holding them stuck here. This might oh. be a shooting gallery for Miggy. If only he had known, he probably would have <laughs> kept firing, but I'm sure this is going to be a non negligible amount of damage onto University of Windsor. Yeah, 33 <laughs> HP left on Sour Man, and I'm sure the rest of them are hurting from that experience as well. Petro finding three with the perfect spray control. He knows exactly how to tame his gun. Petro finding four now. He could get the ace as long as nobody on his team cheats him out of it. But if he wants to go for that chase, I think he values the winning the game more. Whether or not you agree with that is debatable, but Andy is still able to find that last kill. No ace for him, but in our hearts, he got it. When it's this close, you don't get mad at your teammates for taking the kill. Not you at need all. anything that you can get, especially when, you know, 
we've seen crazier things happen. Like we just saw there, 4K. Could have happened right back. Could have been the most insane play of the century. Mm -hmm. But now, once again, University of Windsor does have guns in their hands, but Saints are just looking stacked on money. So even if they win this round, Saints are going to have a response. A lot of pride is riding on this one. So even if you could say you got an ace in this, it's the Battle of Windsor. What well, ultimately matters is being able to say that you won. And it is also Nace Star League Varsity Premier. This is one of the top of the line leagues. Every win is basically resume worthy. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you don't go chasing anything too glorious and you can walk away with the win so far nobody's dropped in this round which is pretty rare already usually we at least have one pickoff but this seems to be one of those slow and steady rounds very tactical putting the tactical and tactical fps definitely tactics are the name of the game here quite literally and now they slowed down We've been seeing very chaotic rounds after rounds, but now sometimes you have to sit back and think. But hey, you don't have to think when you just shoot through a wall and True. put the fear of God into them. <laughs> right now. No point in not going for it. They know you're there, yep. right? <laughs> just, just see if they're there. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and now things are just calm. The calm before the storm. University winds are just not quite sure what to do. Mm -hmm. They finally have weapons in their hands. They're just having that anxiety that the Saints had in the round game one. Hey, popping on top of the box. There's going to be two. Ooh, but one. But he doesn't know he might does find he? another. Yes, he does not. As Sour Man clutches it up. That's going to be a very valuable opening. Miggy has proven to be uh, more than the Guardian of the Stairs, as Andy earned the title in the previous rounds. But the Guardian of everything, Andy getting a little bit too ambitious with that pre-fire. Now they know that he's there, and he's watching that exact angle. That's enough information for University of Wizard to feel confident rushing out. But Andy is at least going to be able to find Anch. But he's on the left side of them now. It is another shooting fish in the barrel situation. But the fish shoot back here. Drew finding two, but it's not enough. Saints are taking this 11 to 7 and they are celebrating overjoyed with their accomplishments thus far. Two more rounds is all they're going to need to take this series over the Battle of Windsor, but University of Windsor still is in this series. And they're nearly all but guaranteed this next round as just looking at the money. Yeah, <laughs> 10K. Sure they're, they're able to buy a little Ooh. bit, but you're not going to put a dent in, in St. Clair College's yeah. pockets here. I feel like in this situation, University of Windsor, the only thing that they can really bank on is just flawless execution. You are on the T side, so it is a little bit easier. You do have the initiative to act, so you can go through the plan, but their plan right now might just be to survive after their initiation. Doesn't exactly go their Ray. Rai finding three. Sly Fakey gonna go take Rai down, but he's gonna get pushed through the smoke as well. Dunk, the last man standing, holding wow. through the smoke, but as soon as it dissipates, he's gonna be found in hostile territory. Mickey coming from behind, getting the headshot one round away from the Saints taking the series. University of Windsor must be nervous fighting off the back foot. And I, at this point, cannot see it going any other way. St. Clair College just taking a massive lead here. Just looking at the kills, it is amazing to see. They, the money, it's just flowing. They have no end. It's like an ever-flowing fountain, the fountain of youth. They're young, they're spry, they're ready <laughs> money to take this one all the way here. And here we are, potentially the last round potentially. of our land today. University of Windsor wants to keep the dream, dream alive, wants to stay in it. They have the guns to do it, but will they be able to prolong this match a little bit longer? Fountain is where Sour Man is choosing to make his mark. Things are still being slow, but the first blood is drawn as Sour Man gets found by Andy and the Op 2 now. This seems to be a common theme, but Drew actually saying nay to him. I am the Opper here. There can only be one. Anch finds Miggy in the hall. But Anch is going to be reconvening with this team. 3-2-3 three, three now, and again... It's just one slip up that can take you out of this series if you're on the side of University of Windsor, so the nerves must be there, but it's not gonna stop them from pushing through the beautiful flash. Anse is gonna find two, and the last save, Petro, on the other side of the map, that's at least gonna afford University of Windsor a free plant. Plant is down. It's looking very good for University of Windsor. This is what they need. He's gonna push in, push in loud, push in proud. He's gonna just try and use the chaos to his advantage, but hey, against an op. You can't just push these angles. Not it's going to be a round finally going over 
the way of the Worship Wizard, they might be able to actually bring this back now. Potentially. Again, it, with the amount of pressure that University of Windsor have shown themselves capable of producing, I really, like, again, it's 12 to 8, but that's not that bad of a scoreline if you are University of Windsor. They've shown us that they can be very scrappy and resilient in these moments where pressure can mount. They don't let it get to them, and they still execute their plans. They don't let the pressure from the Saints allow them to change their game plans. They only adapt, but Andy is one hard thing to adapt to. When you have an offer with this amount of skill of this caliber, it can be very difficult to go through, but they're still doing it nonetheless. University of Windsor has has to find a way to get through the defense that the Saints are holding up. They have to try and get through here. They have to try their darnest. Their backs are up against the wall. It's all on the line here. You really don't want to screw up. And they're already down a man here from Andy. You gotta watch out for those ops. They're playing it slow and steady. They don't want to throw for their potentially last chance here. Kind of split up right now, checking every angle, clearing every angle that they can. Ooh. Wow, Miggy, what a great pick there. I didn't even see where he was. He was on top of a box there. <laughs> second second uh, precision there. Throw out a smoke, throw out a molly, try and clear the way for the team. With Andy playing so far back, it's going to be a tough push. I think he missed the op shot. That might be their opportunity to do something here. But it looks like Spot Petro's him. going on the massive flank, and he gets the kill. And now there's just one left on the side of University of Windsor. That's it. Flawless was how we started this series, and flawless is how we're going to end it. The Saints are making penance for their previous mistakes on Ancient and showing us that they are the dominant team in the city of Windsor for Counter-Strike 2. University of Windsor still a very worthy opponent, and we're glad to have shared this series with them today. But at the end of it, the Saints are going to be able to take it 2-1 against the University of Windsor. And a reverse sweep, I must add. They did lose True, the first round on Ancient, but it was a close match. Second match, a little bit more St. Clair sided in the what a match to end it on. Oh, Couldn't yeah. get any closer for the beginning there until St. Clair once again found their stride and figured out what worked. Yeah, they found out what worked and they just went about executing it so well. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy that this game went the way it did. Both teams played out of their minds and showed us what they're capable of. I really have no complaints with how this series went and kind of just bring us through memory lane here. Ancient, how did you see that one? How, how, did, how did Ancient tell you the series was going to go? Um, just with how even it was, right? The Saints the really end. had their moments, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't as back and forth, but it was very close. You could tell the skill levels were so evenly matched, mm -hmm. even when University of Windsor did have their, their advantages and won round after round after round and ultimately won the game. You could tell that the Saints really did have something there. They just need to polish up a little bit and polish it. They did into a, a beautiful shining object and they got the beautiful shining trophy of this game. For sure. I, I really thought you were going to say they were shining a turd because <laughs> Ancient ended up going the way of University of Windsor. And you say it was close. It ended up being close. But the way I see how Ancient went for the Saints was they started playing the game maybe three-fourths of the way through the end. Before that, they exactly. were kind of floundering. They didn't have the opportunity to kind of dig their heels into the ground and start executing the plans and strategies that they actually wanted to. They did hesitate a lot. They did make a, lot of, a couple of mistakes here and there, while University of Windsor were able to hit the ground running and just immediately mow them over. So overall very well done by both teams but the action is not completely over yet of course we wouldn't have the teams here and on the <laughs> stage if we weren't going to talk to them so we are going to be able to set up some interviews which we will be getting to as soon as possible but don't go anywhere thank you very much for watching the games tonight we'll be right back with some interviews with these teams
Ladies and gentlemen, today was a very, very good performance from both teams. And it is an always a pleasure and always a joy to have a guest school joining us. We have Miggy of the St. Clair Academy CS team. And we also have Ounce from the University of Windsor. And I definitely want to pick your guys' brains as we witnessed trying to find the words here immaculate series it was so close in the end and it felt such like a, such a competitive series i want to ask you guys a couple of questions and the first will probably be the most nerdy question um and of course be sure to introduce yourselves as soon as you get the mics but first question you know game one for the side of university of windsor felt pretty one-sided especially in the beginning Saints were able to kind of take it back, but it still felt very strongly one-sided. Um, what do you feel like, Miggy, was the reason that your your guys' team struggled against it? And then for you, Alex, how do you feel that you guys kind of established a dominance and held it? And then, you know, for map two, all the way around, Saints kind of absolutely dominated. Why do you feel like that was the case, and how did you guys overcome that? We'll start with Miggy. Yeah, um, first map, we started slow. I think we could have worked a little bit better. Uh, map control-wise and getting the trades done. We couldn't really get the trades going on, and uh, we just kept losing rounds. And then after towards the end, we kind of figured them out a little bit and um, kind of get picked up some rounds. We got a little unfortunate a couple of rounds, so we couldn't recover. Um, but they played really well. Uh, we couldn't adjust them at the beginning. I think uh, the nerves a little bit on my team. Uh, some of them are a little bit, uh, they haven't played land in a while. So uh, I think the nerves kind of get to us uh, first half, and then we kind of just started playing our game. Uh, but we couldn't recover. Uh, leading to the second, third map, you know, we had a talk like, hey, it's just a game. We, we know how to, you know, we know that we be practicing, we work hard, we know what to do. So leading to the second and third map, we were a little bit more relaxed and uh, kind of focused on our game and how we used to play, in, you know, online. So Yeah, that really worked out for you guys. You guys played a lot more consistently, a lot stronger overall. So worked out for you guys. I'm going to give you this mic here and same thing to you. Okay. Well, it's... What I have to say, it's it's kind of neutral. Not really much to say. We're kind of we're kind of oh, take it. It's not not really much to say. We're kinda, I think historically we've been pretty good at vertigo in our scrims and pretty sorry pretty bad at vertigo and pretty good at ancient in our scrims. And just like also historically in our scrims, we do a really good job coming back. Oh, our yeah. Me and my teammates also in matches we do so we never let the environment get to us at all really. And I just, that's something I have to commend my teammates for. They're really good at doing that. And so like when you guys were coming back, it was really easy to just keep that mental in, in check. And I've, I've got some fraggers on my team, not gonna lie. <laughs> like Sour Man, he, he gets kills when I need him to. I can just leave him somewhere and he frags out. Yeah, nobody guys. nobody would argue that you guys yeah. are able to kind of keep under the pressure. It's not easy being the away team, especially in a crowd, um, especially in a facility like this. The, the, the atmosphere can get to you guys, but you guys always look so relaxed every time we see you. And to kind of get a little bit deeper into the like team spirit here, I'm curious, as an outsider, you know, looking at the opponent team, if you had to grind wingman with one of those players, who would you pick up? In fact, Alex, you could start. Uh, or, oh, sorry. You could go for it. Well, I just have to pick whoever, like on the other side. I'm just gonna have to pick the top fragger because, like, I wasn't, I wasn't like looking around, Simple, looking at names in the in the fucking kill feed or anything. So, I just have to. What I, the name that stood out to me, who was fragging a lot, was Petro. He was doing really good on one map. He was, so I'd probably pick Petro. Yeah. Uh, my side was Sour Man. Couldn't really figure him out. He's uh, like you said, he's just never played competitor before. I think, right? Yeah. So he's the goat. He just started playing, I guess, and he was. Uh, he was giving me a hard time up there sometimes, so couldn't figure him out. He was sending some really good shots to me, so hopefully one day we can see him in the future. So. Well, well, yeah, I mean, hopefully you guys will get the opportunity to play each other. You know, even maybe on the same team if you guys ever do matchmaking. I'd definitely love to see that at some point. And last question I got for you guys here, um, especially with the lively atmosphere that we had tonight. I'm curious, you know, even in the casting room, Matthias and I were able to hear thumbs up to you Matthias we were able to hear you guys shouting a lot you know I can even hear both your guys' voices are a little bit hoarse um, you know in your experiences Counter-Strike players I'm sure you've seen a lot of crazy things but tonight what was the moment that kind of stood out to you the most for me at least it's got to be Andy getting the no scope off shot in the middle there that was absolutely crazy and I'm curious to see what else you guys stood out to you guys tonight. Uh... Everybody played well today, Andy. Great shots, getting the picks when we needed. Uh, Josh, me and him kind of working together. Patrick, you know, just calling everything, being the best at Joe he can be. He's doing a great job. Riley, you know, 
getting the fraction we need him. Um, I think for me, the best thing today was uh, kind of the land experience. I haven't been playing on a stage in probably in about yeah. a year. I kind of stopped playing a little bit, and I'm kind of jumping back, and it's bringing me back to, you know, It's interesting how the desks are so different. No, I know, I know. This yeah. Good memories uh, in the past. I used to play a lot. I don't play anymore, but kind of getting back and uh, see how it goes. It was a great time playing with them. Uh, you know, got nervous. I love getting nervous on you know land. So it's my most people don't like being nervous. No. I love it because uh, you know that's 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 when you you know kind of prove yourself and how far you can go as a player, right? Because if you're just gonna play on land on late, you're not you know you're not gonna go anywhere. So here's how you test yourself. You know, you come out on land and you practice and you play hard and then. Show up and land and show you what you can do, right? So it's a great time. You? So I think, well, just I usually get loud a lot even when we're not in land, like even just in a voice call, just screaming because when my guys get clutches, dude, I have to I have to get loud for them, you know, and they clutch so much. It's insane. And also it's just so interesting, the environment on land to also see the other team reciprocating like yeah. that because like you can hear them also screaming. And I heard some, I don't know, I couldn't like make out what you were saying, but like I heard some, some <laughs> like, I heard you guys say some love, stuff. It's all love, it's all love. <laughs> I don't know, I couldn't make it out, so it doesn't matter anyway. That's good, that's good. Any specific in-game in moment? In-game moment, yeah. Uh, well, the moment I was like most stressed and like I thought was super nice, like I got the loudest sour man in that clutch on overpass, the pistol. Oh that was so nice, because like, yeah. We kind of we kind of want really wanted that pistol and he got it. I was like even thinking in the middle. Okay, sour man's in a one v two. He can do this, yeah. like. He held that. Yeah, and I was like I was watching him do it and he was doing so well in that clutch. If, if you I go back it. and watch the vod, you won't be disappointed. That's yeah, all it was so say. sick. Uh, but speaking of won't be disappointed, I hope you guys weren't disappointed today, and I doubt you were because tonight was an excellent experience for both teams. I gotta thank everybody. Thank both of you guys for talking to me tonight. Thank you for the games making them all interesting, and I thank, thank you man. all for watching at home, and I thank the audience who is here who made this event feel all the more alive. And I gotta, of course, thank our sponsors we have HyperX, Subway, Tim Hortons, the St. Clair SRC and the St. Clair College Alumni Association. So thank you for making this all possible and thank you to Danners and Tommy in the back and Amanda who is here as well and gotta thank everybody at home. Thank you of course to Matthias giving me the shrug of all shrugs for not mentioning him but you guys already know Matthias you saw him earlier but he doesn't need a thanks really. But with all the thanks out of the way thank you very much once again and we hope you have a fantastic night.